Welcome to Delta Green, Music from a Darkened Room, Episode 1 of 2. Music from a Darkened Room was written by Dennis Detwiller. My name is Shane Ivey. I was the handler or game master for this game. This was the first game of what turned out to be a long-term campaign. It opens with questions about character creation as we establish the agents and their team. We played a few months before the Agent's Handbook was published, so one or two minor rules changed before publication. The players were Amber, playing Deputy U.S. Marshal Emma Black. This was Amber's first ever game of Delta Green, or any other Cthulhu Mythos RPG for that matter, so that was very fun. Tabitha played unhinged former anthropologist Molly Grew. Jeremy played VA physician Stanley Murray. John played FBI Special Agent Aaron Dresner. Agent Dresner began play with no prior exposure to Delta Green. combat medic in Iraq. Uh, he, when he came back, he finished up his medical degree and now he works for the VA. Mm-hmm. He teaches karate on Tuesdays and Thursdays and goes for drinks with his sister on Friday. Mm-hmm. He tries to stay pretty organized. I think that his uh, extreme violence was that he uh, was flown in to uh, uh, something that happened in Iraq that went horribly wrong mm-hmm. and he saw people killed in a lot of gruesome ways and was still able to handle himself and do his job. Okay. And an agent probably saw that and that's how he drew the attention because Delta Green always needs a cleanup squad. No. That's that that's that's the skill for like cleaning up a crime scene. Oh, oh well. I meant but patching it? people together. Yeah. I'm okay. oh, sorry. Good. That's fine. Um the uh oh your hit points you round up the average. You do? Yeah. Okay. Fifteen? Yeah, fifteen instead of fourteen. Uh, just ten? How do I have the most hit points? You're the strongest and, and healthiest of us all. I'm a vagrant. Well, you obviously <laughs> survived on the streets for a long time. <laughs> oh. So why don't you tell Shane about? Um, I'm playing a former anthropology professor, falling on hard times, living on the street. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, very. I the drugs. <laughs> Persuasive person. <clears throat> Have you decided, like, for each of your characters, is everybody kind of already kind of exposed to um, to the organization and know kind of what's what, or any of them? Well, I any actually, of them not. I mean, did I'd any like to you be, not opt for that background horribleness. I'd like to have no background horribleness, please. Okay. <laughs> That's this stuff, right? I. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay. It's optional wanted to ask about hard experience. Mm-hmm. How is that different from things man was not meant to know? Just the directness of learning stuff. Okay. You know, so the exposure to things man was because not meant to know. I mean, literally so some kind of old mythos. Okay. You know, thing kind of that where you skill. learned a lot I mean, about it. And, right. And, um, you know, and came away changed by it. Whereas hard experience, the other things you might have had a brush with something. Okay. <coughs> something yeah, like mine, I didn't see the extreme. Vi- I didn't see what caused the extreme violence, just the aftermath of it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, and and, you, and, was, and was sort of that ex- well, exposure sort of extensive enough if I don't to find another choice character. Okay. Well, I, well, I, I it's took hard it's experience part of because I figured living on the what streets, she has seen some shit. She's gone through hell. Okay. Sixty. So, for captivity or imprisonment, does that mean that they lose five sand, 
and then when their power goes down by three, they recalculate their sand based on that? No. 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 No, you lose five sanity, you reduce the power by three. So what what still needs to be done? Uh, We need to figure out what cell we are. Or if we're Uh, part of a cell. We can go through our characters too here. Um, My character, Aaron Dressner, is a white collar crime FBI agent turned in. He's going to FBI training for Mm -hmm. something to charge you on. That's the one you required for a while. Yeah. And and the little finishing details here, number five, don't overlook those things. Because those are also critical, even though they're not number one G. Three little bullet points. Yeah. So I brought them the first one. What's the thing you disliked about your agent? Something you find admirable? And then some personal details. So uh, this guy, yeah, he was a kind of a math quiz in college. Um, um, went on to do. You know, additional degrees beyond his bachelor's, which he did for Johnson. But he did get he did a master's in accounting for sure. Anyway, whatever it was, he did mm-hmm. mathematical accounting type stuff. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, and that's how he came to the attention of he wrote some papers, and that's how he came to the attention of the FBI. And he had a, um, when he joined the agency, he had a boss who sort of been his mentor all along. Mm-hmm. He sort of who keeps track of him and that's fostered his career. So he is, <coughs> like I say, not big on field stuff, but big on working things out in the background. Uh, he is devout. He is a, a sort of liberal Episcopalian, and um, that's one of his bonds to his church. Okay. Uh, he's married, has a wife, no kids, he's 33. Um, pretty boring dude. <laughs> he's, you know, uh, he's a little nervous, like he doesn't deal well with things out of the ordinary stress, which is going to really not go very well for him, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. <coughs> but his admirable uh, trait is his, um, his sincere faith. So. But yeah, he thinks he's good at, stunningly good at accounting. Um, <laughs> criminology, decent. Oddly enough, good at dodging. I guess Cr- criminology in, in this context sort of is... is um, about kind of examining, um, Pattern. examining patterns of r- like illicit relationships. You know, it's it's that it's that you know thing on the wire of building exactly. up the big r- the big maps of, of, of conspiracies and how they fit together. So it usually has to do specifically with criminal conspiracies and criminal enterprises and behavior patterns. Yeah, I'm gonna bump that and drop forensics because that's not really what he does. Yeah, and forensics is more physically dealing with crime scenes and processing them for the sake of prosecution right. or, or yeah. preventing yeah. prosecution. Which he still he said hi. Uh, he's good at reading people. He's very good. He's very persuasive. He's a nice guy. So he has not... Have your toys. Uh, you have to look at him. Yeah, toys to play with. I'd rather he isn't already part of that. Yeah, that's fine. I can, I can, I can certainly brush it away. Okay, who's next? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm playing a federal agent who is Emma Black. Um, and her history is she um, used to she did under she went undercover for Interpol in uh, in Ireland to um, try to infiltrate uh, this big time uh, guns trader who was try who was trying to get weapons for the IRA and. She got really involved with the guy, but she was on point all the time. I mean, she was always mm-hmm. there to do the job, and but eventually was discovered, and so he uh, didn't take kindly to that because he, you know, he and her were involved. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, he he took her and um, this other age agent who was also working there, and he and. Uh, imprison them both, and they anyway they had to get out of that situation. But when when they got out of that, they were rescued out of that situation. That's how she came back to the states to work uh, for the FBI. Mm-hmm. 
And let's see. Uh, she's she's very loyal to the cause that she's working for, and I think that's kind of what um, set her apart um, from from others. Is that she gave everything. She didn't have any bonds outside of her work bonds because she that was everything to her. Um, and she and she always worked it to further the, the mission, the success of the oh, mission. But it's she's very charming. But what people don't like about her is that she's not antisocial because most of it is fake. Most of it is just to get to know you to further mm -hmm. her thing. But she's very good at it. But she doesn't really want to like hang out with you. Okay, but she's manipulative. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, and um. Okay, so what what uh, like what are, what stats do, are high, you know I don't know four, 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 thirteen or fourteen or better and what skills are say sixty and better? Um, <coughs> let's see. All right, well, like willpower and stuff like that up here. Well, no, you can read these. Like so, you're notably extremely oh, intelligent. very smart and fairly charismatic, but that's really mm -hmm. the only thing she'll notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And for skills, anything that's over 50? Um, 50 well, she's, uh, 50 she's alert. She, cr criminologist, she's pretty good in criminology. Um, firearms, of course, which she learned from the mm -hmm. Irish arms trader. Um, human. Mm -hmm. Human reading people. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. She's very persuasive. Very persuasive. Um, she's good at searching for things. And she is amazing at um, combat because she found herself in some really tricky situations. She ended okay. up and went through training and everything. So. Okay. And she yeah. speaks foreign, foreign languages, a couple different ones. All right. You know which ones? Russian and French. Okay. But not Gaelic? Not Gaelic, no. <laughs> we don't speak a lot of Gaelic over in Ireland. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So the, uh, so just so you know, it, it doesn't matter so much, but like, you know, there, she probably was working for the, F, was F, the FBI or the CIA or the, you know, U.S. Marshal Service. Mm -hmm. Interpol isn't an agency that actually has cops. They're more of a clearinghouse to coordinate the efforts of, of, of okay. these departments. Um, so the... So if the, usually it's the U.S. Marshal Service that deals with Interpol because if they want to track down a fugitive in some other country, and um, then they'll, t you know, they'll sort of work through Interpol to grease the wheels with the local authorities of, of that country so that the U.S. Marshal's deputies can go into that other country with permission. Okay. I put U.S. Marshals. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Got it. My character is Stanley Murray. Uh, he's a physician. He served in Iraq uh, as a combat medic where he sold some shit. Uh, after he got out of the army, he finished his medical training and joined the VA. Uh, one of his lifelong hobbies has been karate and now he teaches it. Uh, he has a sister that he has drinks with. Uh, one thing that people admire about him is that he is almost impeccably organized, uh, but he, the flip side of that is he's also very impatient with people who display a lack of discipline. So, you know, like people who can't get the things on time or don't put things in the right place. Yeah. Hold out a job. Yeah. That's not my fault. <laughs> um, people who won't take responsibility for that. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> The, you know, he's got uh, some shrapnel scars from his time uh, uh, in Iraq uh, that are kind of noticeable. Uh, part of his, uh, I think his charisma got lowered by the extreme violence. So mm -hmm. that was probably a... I mean, that, it's, yeah, I mean, charisma, it's up to you what, the, what that... Like, charisma is more personality in this mm -hmm. game than it is looks, you know, so it's entirely... Okay. So well, since he wasn't really totally involved in that, that part of it, yeah, I think like it's being just, exposed to violence and therefore having charisma drop. It more reflects, generally, it more reflects your personality has changed because you've kind of 
become more withdrawn and cold. You know? Yeah. I, <coughs> yeah, that's what it's going to reflect more now that I'm thinking. So they can turn now, come with yeah. scarring for a combat veteran, but they're not, but it's well, not I, necessarily. I think with because of, I like the idea that he didn't see something, but he came in and he, you know, helped some people who had some no, terrible was, To get to become yeah. adapted to violence, it was repeated. Repeated exposure. times. Was like a lot of, okay. a lot of awfulness, yeah. Which, working in a trauma so, so. unit in Iraq, he would have been exposed to. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay, well, yeah, I'll keep some shrapnel as far as fine. Uh, he's uh, mildly intelligent, not as much as she is, but again, still pretty smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he is pretty athletic, uh, and he's good at dodging as well as using melee weapons and prescribing medication and (laughs) knowing biology. Mm -hmm. Uh, He is uh, very good at surgery and unarmed combat and uh, using medicine. I guess medicine in this is like diagnosing people Mm -hmm. or is it? It's it's more like internal medicine. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Keeping people healthy. Yeah, and he is amazing at first aid. Like, if you can't stop the bleeding, you need to come and see me. That triage. Good. You like you said about that. Mm-hmm. Although the medic last time was the one who drew the card, crushed his hand. Was it All right. Um, Molly is a vagrant. She used to be an anthropology professor who has fallen on hard times through no fault of her own. Thank mm-hmm. you very much. Um, she um, she's very strong, like weirdly strong, <laughs> and <laughs> what? <laughs> like she looks like this frail little thing, but then she, you know, is wiry. All right, I'm not really sure what constitution does. It's sort of, of yeah, health okay. and kind of physical sturdiness. Okay. So she's super healthy. Like you would expect her to be sickly because she's living on the streets, but she's as healthy as a horse. I'm just kind of imagining her wearing a luchador mask the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, <coughs> no, she stays as clean as possible, and she has very, very long hair. Um, and she's terrified. Does all she have long time. underarm hair? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's I've her with dreads <laughs> and one of those <laughs> Nick Bob yeah. Bob yeah. Bob yeah. yeah. And the oh, Barbie she's one of those baby. Yes. <laughs> she was <laughs> she's a, a anthropology <laughs> professor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She was an anthropology professor. That's what they look like Yeah. Something that people admire about her is that she is, despite her con- her circumstances generous to a fault, sometimes actually literally to a fault, considering. Um, but because of her situation, because of her personality, she's deeply, deeply cowardly. She's terrified all the time. And You're some in a wrong right? business. <laughs> <laughs> well, she has seen some shit and it scares yeah, her. Yeah. <laughs> She knows it's out there when other people don't know what it's like. Yeah. If they've seen what she's seen, they'd be scared too. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so what are what are her big skills? Uh, like she is shockingly persuasive. I'm kind of ninety. Okay. And um, she knows a lot about history. She's good at reading people with that human score, human intelligence, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, she's very good at surviving. And she knows a weird amount of stuff about the occult, which yeah, seems some shit, man. Comes along with the anthropology too. Yeah. All right. So, I've got some questions about uh, why s- uh, some of the scores that start at zero percent make sense. Mm-hmm. But like computer <laughs> science, I'm guessing computer science is going to be more like. Forensics or? Well, it, it's actually doing things from scratch. You know? okay. I mean, use, Not using using, using Windows. You don't need the computer science skill. Right. Programming a new operating system. You know. Gotcha. You need the computer science skill. So 
and it's the same for, like with law. If you don't have any law skill, you still so know how law. to not get a traffic ticket. Right. But um, not how to defend yourself in court. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the the cra all the craft skills too. Like the craft skill is where things like electrician and locksmithing and mechanics and things like that go. So, okay. You know, a lot of people have some kind of baseline common knowledge along those lines. Which, if that's the case, then you just make it you know an intelligence level or something like that. If you have the actual skill, then you know you've got. It. So, um, all right. So, I think the the first thing I want to I need to figure out is who's who's sort of the who are the actual um, Delta Green agents. Not you. Me. I'll be a Delta Green agent. Can I be a Delta Green agent even though I've never played before? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So we could be connected. Well, well yeah, I've, I've got that part. I just yeah. need to know the figure out the basics first. So. so um, you know, I, I think that <clears throat> in that case, I figure probably, um, you know, probably the the three of you have been, uh, have, have, like, your character has had a couple of incidents. The way it works is your character has had, and this is the case for all of you, but one or two times, had one or two um, incidents where you came into, you know, contact with some horrible situation or thing and had to had to figure out how to deal with it. And so when the, um, like, I'll use your character as a case study because you're a federal, actual federal agent, and that's sort of the standard. So what probably happened was you were exposed to something really horrible and kind of either vaguely or not so vaguely supernatural and very, very dangerous and... Um, and so, you know, instead of, for, for whatever reasons, either because it was so dangerous or whatever, you know, you decided to try to just keep it to yourself without telling a bunch of people and looking like a crazy person or having strangers, you know, dig up this horrible, dangerous thing and, and get killed by it, um, something along those lines. But it sort of came to the attention of, of somebody else who was on the lookout for that kind of threat and um, you know and then you're <clears throat> then that 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 person kind of became a, a, a patron sort of who, who got your character in on another operation later that was also kind of dangerous but they needed somebody that they could kind of count on and so that's happened probably a couple of times now, um, and uh, in, enough times that you know that your character has been <clears throat> has been sort of formally read in on on this program that's uh, that's that's very 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 secret secretive and you know top secret and it's like Fight Club you're not allowed to ever talk about about that Fight Club secret, secret. yeah and um, and uh, and so, in the course of all that, you've met and you've been involved with these other two, um, either once or twice, uh, enough that basically they're kind of like that. This is kind of the team is you and these two, and they're neither of them are actual federal agents. Like his character worked with the VA, so he's, he's actually got you know he's 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 got. Uh, He's an, at least an employee of the federal government, and so can get kind of fitted onto some things as a as a contractor. And then, um, what was it? What was your character's name? Molly. And then uh, Molly is not Doctor So and So. Not anymore. Like every other anthropologist uh, in the universe, yeah, the it doctor. Was, it was it was Doctor Gru, but yeah. people make fun of me out here when I do that. So it's just Molly now. Um, all right. So with the, uh, and so with, with, with Molly, basically it's, you know how to kind of get in touch and the reason you get in touch is because she's been in the mix once or twice with these things. And therefore, if you need, 
if you need somebody who is at least knows how to be careful, then, then you have access to somebody that knows how to be careful. If you want to know how scared to be, they'll have that word again. <laughs> so, on the scale of one, but, yeah. So, so with the, you know, with her character, uh, how how much, um, how much of her of her sort of behavior is is genuine, you know, genuine just fear that's going to shape everything, and how much of it is fear that she's going to overcome by being all brave and whatnot is to, to be determined. So. Um, and uh, there it is. So the situation is. Uh, what was your character's name again? Aaron. 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 What's his name? Dressner. Dressner. So, so Agent Dressner, you're in the. Your characters are mostly in the sort of in the north northeast around the New Jersey, New York area, Philadelphia area. Um, so, Agent Dressner, your uh, um, <clears throat> your character works in in I guess probably the Trenton field office of the for the FBI, and um, it's you know it's not a it's not a glamour assignment by any means, but you're, you're still pretty young, mm -hmm. so maybe stepping stone, who knows? Mm -hmm. But um, but the the situation kicks off when a fellow agent from the Trenton office, uh, a, a special agent Arthur Donnelly, um, has committed suicide in this house in uh, Meadowbrook, New Jersey. Uh, not his house. It, it was you know the the whatever he ties. He doesn't have any ties to it that anybody knew about. But um, but the the bureau tells you to go and just check in, check around, check into it, check into him, make sure there's nothing going on that's going to, you know, bite us in the butt, and, um, and dot the I's and cross the T's, and so that everybody can have a nice, peaceful uh, funeral and not worry about any weirdness mm -hmm. um, that's going to get the, that's going to get the Bureau put on the news. And, um, so meanwhile, Black. <laughs> it'll be. Is, was it Black? Is that the name? Mm -hmm. Emily Emma Black. Black. So Emma Black. So so it will be as a deputy marshal. It would be. It would be deputy marshal Black. Deputy marshal Black. Um, the uh, the notorious. <laughs> so so Emma. In the meantime, when when you get called in on on an operation for. Uh, for Delta Green, it's generally really kind of sketchy and shady, and they, well, e even even the approach <laughs> to it is you don't have like meetings that you go to or anything like that. I mean, you'll get sort of orders as if you as if you're like a spy in a foreign country being handled by a CIA officer, where you'll get little messages in dead drops or some nonsense like that, um, and instructions that are very kind of um, um, oblique. Cryptic. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, so in this case, you get just sort of a beaten FedEx package with the Maryland return address. And, um, and inside it is a sheet of paper and a battered old cell phone, like old pre smartphone cell phone. It's an and idea. <laughs> that's the piece of that's the piece of paper. Okay. And so your response to that is you know you know how to get in touch with your of your colleagues that you've worked with on these kinds of operations before these two people. Um and uh Okay. Alright. Got it. So the phone, um the phone has a pre-programmed uh, numbers, and one of them is uh, um, one of 
of them is just the main bullet is, is Yago, and the other one is Emil Yarrow, and another one for Elizabeth Tucker, and another one for Meadowbrook Storit. Okay. And that's all that's on the phone. Okay. Coffee should be ready. If you guys want to. All right. Yeah, I'll do that. So why don't you dictate uh, to them how you get in touch with, or you guys figure out how you get in touch and where you meet and how you, what you convey to them. Okay. okay. So, Stanley and Molly. So what have we maybe worked on some stuff together? Yeah, uh, and we've prob we've probably had a commission or two before yeah. at this point. Nothing, yeah. yeah, nothing super crazy. But. My involvement was accidental at first, but I just kind of stayed involved. Yeah. Some odd and useful skills in building. Yeah. Well, at okay. least the fact that I can pick her up and run. <laughs> Okay, so do you, should I just give you this? Yes. Yeah. You want it? <laughs> so, yes. You, go, this ahead, go ahead and read it out loud. For the yeah. Yeah. John, the John, you're not in the mix yet, no. so just, you. you know, yeah. Yeah. Investigate the suspicious circumstances of the death of FBI Special Agent Arthur Donnelly of Trenton, New Jersey. Focus attention on 1206 Spooner Avenue, Meadowbrook, New Jersey. Spooner. This house has been brought to our attention before and is suspected as a paranormal threat. It has been reported to influence behavior. Employ extreme caution. Instructions. Determine the cause of death of FBI Special Agent Arthur Donnelly. Determine whether 1206 Spooner Avenue represents an ongoing threat to the public. Determine the source and nature of the threat and how to neutralize it. Contact case officer for further instructions. Possible friendly contact contacts. Emil Yarrow, parapsychologist, Fulton, New Jersey. Elizabeth Tucker, antique dealer, Trenton, New Jersey. Other assets, Meadowbrook Store at Unit 2230. Another storage. I know, that's what I'm it's, wondering. It seems like that's what we could go into. Probably. It's a green, it's a green box. Okay. But so, I don't know. So that, should that be where you go first? Mm, not, necessarily. not necessarily. I mean, we don't know that we'll need guns. Do you need a grenade launcher? I might. Do you need a... I like to be prepared. <laughs> Do you need a half full body bag? Some false identity. Ew. <laughs> oh, you never know what's inside those things. So, so, so um, you guys, give me your. You know, you don't don't you don't have to go into into deep detail right now, but give me a sense of how you initiate things. Sure. Well, the first thing I want to do is uh, Google. Um, Arthur Donnelly's name and see if I can come up with any news stories. Sure, yeah. FBI agent from the Trenton Field Office cut his own throat at 1206 Spooner Avenue. That was, and that was made Jersey. public? Well, yeah. Blood cells on us is what it sucks. I can't mm -hmm. imagine they didn't have to cover that up. Though. Oh, I'm sure they did. But it's, I'm sure they tried it's, to. It's, but this is America. Freddie Lowndes, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, then I guess the next natural thing would be to Google 1206 Spooner Avenue and then dig through all of the recent news posts about it and see what the older ones were. Uh, there's not like a, a, a string of news articles on, on that, at that address, but what, kind, what, are you, what are you looking for? Like, what are you trying to uncover or, or find out? Well, I mean, it's in, in, in general. In general yeah, yeah, it says that, well, sure uh, it's, on that it's, that it's been brought to stuff. the attention before. So, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. what kind of shit? That it there? seems yeah. to <clears throat> determine the source, or it seems to uh, affect people. Who go inside it? So yeah, no, there's there's no haunted house stories in the in, in, in who, who the news websites it? about it. Uh, current owner of record is Yamila Isari, deceased as of 2014. There's no living current owner. No, I mean it's, okay. it's still it's still owned by her estate. Yeah, being, Last owner being subjected to probate. Yamila Isari. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, well, does that name turn up anything? Yeah. 
Yeah. Like an ogre. Um, the, uh, yeah, Yamela is sorry. If you're working together with them, I mean, if you're, if you've got, you know, you've got access to the, to, to them, if you're all at whatever, yeah, you know, diner yeah. or something uh-huh. you're, you're at to compare notes, so. I'll make disparaging remarks and teach oh. you how to use a library. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, <laughs> so, so, uh, what was your name again? Um, Stanley. Okay, so Stanley. On the history mm-hmm. skill, put a little check mark there. Okay. Because okay. the way it works, the way we're getting experience works is if something comes up where you need to use a skill and you fail either because you don't have enough of it or you blow the roll, that's when you put a check mark on the skill and, and it'll, then it can go up later. Learn from your failures. So Yamila Isari uh, was a recent transplant from the United Arab Emirates, daughter of a wealthy family, um, who uh, bought the house in 2012. And she died in 2011. Yeah. <laughs> she bought the house in 2012 and died in 2011. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she was, uh, from what you can tell, it looks like she was a um, uh, college student. Oh, so she was young. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, we don't know what she, she died of. Does it say what she died of? What she Suicide. Died of? Uh-huh. How did she die? How did she kill herself? Did she slit her own throat? Or does it say? I think that's not going to say. Yeah, not in the no good. Yeah. If that's what we're. Yeah. Pretty I mean, you could, if you were to talk to authorities, you know, the coroner or whatever, you could mm-hmm. probably get. Well, lots of details, but just Google's not going to give you that kind of gotcha. Yeah. All right. She bought it. She bought the house, or bought the house after after the previous owner, um, Andrea Falcone, uh, died in 2012. And was that also a suicide? Uh, no, an accident. Did she die in the house? Yeah. Yeah, she like accidentally suffocated. How do you accidentally <laughs> accidentally <laughs> suffocated Yeah. Got stuck in my pillow. Or it could have been well, I guess that would be carbon dioxide poisoning, right? Like suffocation. Well, if like the most detailed information we're gonna get is if when we actually go to Meadowbrook and like go yeah. to their hall of records and pull the trail of deeds and everything, find out who's owned this house, when try and see if any of them are still alive. Yeah, it was a ga- it was a gas leak. With oh, gas okay. leak. Gas leak. Um, see if anyone who has lived in this house is still alive. See if we can find them and talk with them about their experiences in the house. Uh, and, uh, then buy lots of gas <laughs> And matches. Okay. All right. So, what are the three? Tell me what the three of you then set out to do. You've met. It's it's sort of I'm probably early early now. evening go in, somewhere in the you know northern New Jersey area. Maybe so I'll you're probably an hour's day. drive or something like that away from Meadowbrook proper. Well, I can take her since I'm more reputable than she looks to the uh, she is very clean. Hall of Records, <laughs> and uh, uh, we should probably find. A cheap motel nearby that we can get a base out of. Dry living. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll say the the FedEx envelope had a wad of I don't know thousand dollars in cash. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. That's a thousand so dollars more than I was expecting. Go, I want to go and drive do a drive by. I can do a drive by. See if any of us feel inclined. I doubt it so has that immediate. All three of you going in your two cars to drive, just check out the house? I guess, since I have no idea what I'm doing in the Hall of Records. Okay. Yeah. 
unless search would be good at that point. No. I'm trying to I think search would have been good. hidden under the. If you were looking for something under the the the, 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 the <laughs> filing cabinet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. But you're gonna need me with you if you want to actually learn anything. I have bureaucracy. That's all. Yeah, that's, that, that's good. That's good for that's good for right, right getting there. getting people that are actually in there to to let you look at the cooperate. And right. right. All right. So meanwhile, Agent. Dresden. 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 Dres
somewhat frequently, not all the time, but but uh, but yeah. Okay, so I'm going to his residence. Do my next step. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, it uh, it's uh, you know it, it's it's pretty it's pretty bleak. Right. I mean, there's uh, he, he probably he has a couple of pictures of him and his him and his ex wife or him and his family that are sort of stashed in a drawer somewhere. Um, That's pretty impersonal. Um, yeah. Yeah. Look like he spent a lot of time, a lot of time at his house, um, or maybe he did, but he wasn't doing, you know, like. So not like he's an alcoholic anymore. Or if he is, he's doing it elsewhere. Right. Okay. This is why cats. Yeah, I just want to go through the whole place, look at any correspondence, whatever he's got on his desk, if anything, just to sort of see if this permits might suggest. Maybe see if he has any kind of. He's been seeing a therapist or anything, and showed him no. mental health I mean, issues. at his apartment, it's, it's just like almost curiously enough. barren, right? Okay, that is curious. So it's as, almost as if he's not living there full time, or if he is, right. he's still got much of a life, right? Okay. He doesn't have a whole lot invested in his home. Not really. Huh. Okay. So my, my assignment was to sort of check out the details of this and make sure that there's nothing that's going to bite the bureau in the butt if it comes to light. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do more backtracking. And I guess I sort of could only ex-wife. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, the... Uh, also, also, nothing really... No smoking guns come up there. Okay. You know, she's upset and unhappy having, having heard... About it, and um, I'm very good about it, about yeah, smoothing this over. Mm -hmm. I'm being very personable, not professional, not you know, hyper professional with her. Yeah, yeah. I tell her that I do, and then you know, we work together. And right. Well, then all... I mean, she, you know, she she basically her attitude is you probably knew him better than she did because you know, I mean, they they split up a few years ago just because things have deteriorated. Yeah, I and mean, it was just secret on secret on secret. I got sick of it being lied to all the time. Yeah. Oh. Like things to do with the job, or just things to do with the job. And there were there were a couple of uh, you know a couple of affairs, and um, and uh, you know, and he would just spend all of his time away. Mm -hmm. He traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. okay. Um. All right, that's going to make me want to go back and look at his service record again and try to pair that up with, I mean, there's, there's lots of these little absences, lots of these two weeks here and there. Um, uh, more on than, average, two or three a year. I mean, it's not so, like all the time. Right, but more than a typical. I mean, normally you'd be off, set off doing FBI business, right? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean normal, normally if you're assigned to that kind of thing, it would be more long-term. Right. As opposed to just off for off doing it for a, a few weeks. Well, at some point, I guess I'll have to go to the house and see, mm -hmm. see, what I'm see if yeah. there's any kind of indication there of why he might have done it. Mm -hmm. that, and I'll, be, I'll just look and see if was there anything from the bureau he was working on recently? I mean, is there a case that could have been? Well, sure, he had assignments, but, but no, no, nothing, nothing that was related to any of this. Okay. Like he didn't have any reason that you can tell to have been in. Right. Oh, that's weird too. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll go to Meadowbrook now. So, um, the the three of you, what were you doing? You were we're gonna do a drive by. Down? And we're gonna we're gonna caravan down. We're gonna do a drive by the hall of the house, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna go to the Hall of Records in Meadowbrook to try to look into the history of the house a little bit more. <clears throat> okay. Not called ahead and reserve this room at the luxurious days in. Days in Meadowbrook. All right. Right by I ninety five. Um. Yeah. So so Spooner Avenue is is uh this quiet. It's a it's a quiet street, suburban. Um. The uh, neighborhood is is. Generally, it's 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 small houses on kind of largish lots. Um, it's older. Yeah, and uh, um, 
when you find the, the house, uh, Spooner Avenue, it's kind of set back. So um, to, get a, to get a good look at it, you kind of need to drive in uh, into the driveway, you know, and, and um, through the trees. But from the street, you can tell it's, it's, it's very kind of plain, ordinary looking. Um, there's a... To blend in with the rest of the houses that are there and things. Oh, yeah, yeah. How long ago did this guy commit suicide? Oh, a couple of days ago-ish. So there's probably still police too, but not a lot. And, um, who yeah, is, yeah. Who's the listing agent for the house? Well, if it's still owned by her estate, it might not be. Yeah, they have to have that one up for sale, yeah. Okay. There's a big one who gets, who actually owns it now. Mm-hmm. Um, especially given her family is in the AU. Yeah, okay. So, um, uh, right, so the, you guys were driving up. That's what you see sort of from the street. Yeah, I don't think we should go there until we get there. Yeah, I don't think we should go inside, yeah. for sure. What's, what, what are, what's your, what are your alertnesses? 50. 40. 50. 40. Okay. Um, so, the, uh. As you're, as you're driving, Dresner, you're at the house kind of looking it over, looking through his files, and, and outside the house, rather, um, on the street, mm -hmm. and you see these two cars kind of suspiciously. very suspiciously kind of slow down, and people inside kind of staring at the house and mm -hmm. looking interested in it, mm -hmm. and not in a, like, a reporter way. Yeah, I'll get the plates. And, um... And uh, Emma, you definitely notice what's almost certainly an FBI agent in mm -hmm. front of the house getting your plate as you're <laughs> looking at yeah. that, that nondescript black car. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go up to him. In the other car. We're just yeah. gonna okay. pull over and talk to you. Yeah. All three of you piling out and rushing into. I'm I'm gonna be like, guys, or? no, no, we I'm don't a... know anything. Well. When I see her pulling no. off, mm -hmm. I'm going to drive a little ways down, like maybe half a block, and I'm just going to stop okay. and like just watch what's going on through my side view mirror and keep the engine running. Okay. All right. Because I'm going to be hissing so, at you, and you can't hear me because I'm yeah. in the other car. So, so Dresner, are you stepping out of your vehicle as, yeah. as protocol? This person comes up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your human skill, Dresner? 60. Yeah, you... I mean, you should she's, recognize she's a fellow federal yeah, agent. Exactly. Right. She's got the walk. The walk. <laughs> she's got the walk. Yeah. Well, <laughs> walk. Be like, hello, agent. Emma, I'm Emma Black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm uh, Dresner, FBI. Nice to meet you. Okay. So, you're here investigating the... What uh, are you here for? <laughs> I mean, it's common I, knowledge I yeah, could, that he's. I could uh, ask you the same thing. I mean, you could, yeah. you could probably ask you. So <laughs> <laughs> next time, if you're faster, maybe you'll ask me first. Or, uh, or, and, and where do you work? Uh, I am um, Dallas area U.S. Marshal. Oh, okay. Uh, so, are you here about the Donnelly mm -hmm. suicide? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm here for too. Mm -hmm. Have you, uh, what have you found out? Found out anything interesting? Uh, not so far. What's the U.S. Marshal's interest in this? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just, you know, when an agent commits it suicide in such a horrific fashion, we just want to look into it and see what's going on. It's, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> hunting. It's nothing to do with the Marshal Service. That yeah. sounds yeah. fake. The, 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 US, the Marshal Service is about what they do is they track criminals. fugitives, so yeah. people that are, have, have escaped escaped custody, the mar deputy marshals have to go chase them down. Just passing through. Heard about it. Just <laughs> thought I'd see what was going on. Well, uh, yeah, so have you run across any, anything related to Agent 
Um, oh, actually, um, I just got here. So oh, okay. So not really. Um, just trying to find out more about. Yeah, we're just pulling up some loose ends, wrapping things up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So pretty routine. Okay. I was about to go check out the scene. You wanna go with me? Into the house. Mm, yeah, that's where he killed himself. <laughs> well, um, no, we're we're not gonna do that yet. We still have some other things that we'd have to check out before. It's weird to me that <laughs> one, there's three of them. Yeah. Two, only one of them saw three. Yeah. Three, they're in civilian cars. Yeah. Four. And four, she just admitted to you that they do plan on, that we do plan on going yeah. into the house, just not right All now. very suspicious. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> like freaking out yeah. in the other car. I'm waving my I, arms. I'm this whole age. Th- well, not really. But <laughs> you're obviously sort of not the very same. good. I, I don't thought you were good at persuasion. I thought I was too. Well, <laughs> Let, we can backtrack a little bit. Like okay. if you're because yeah, I, I want to allow for the fact that not all players know have sure. knowledge of, 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 of stuff. So yeah. like if you're <laughs> if if your if your objective was to sort of not tip uh, not tip him off that there was something kind of sketchy going on, you know, then then we can work with that instead. Sure. Like your I mean, approach to that would have prob- your character's approach to that would have probably been a little Well what I thought the objective was vague. was to yeah. like bring him in on the investigation. Oh that, and that's totally your call. Yeah that's 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 totally fine from that, my perspective. That was as my game thought. Master. But okay. Yeah. So if you so um, I'm I was just I'm giving you that option. Like if you if you feel like as a player you're kind of getting jacked around because you don't happen to know exactly what the procedures are for federal agents in a circumstance, like say so so I can kind of help you backtrack because I don't want you to get Locked in a corner. I hope there's a section like that. on that in the book. Yeah, it's not going to be big because we but want it to be readable. Readable by yeah. the players. Yeah. yeah. Well, if recognizing that he is with the FBI and, and knowing what I know is a possibility mm-hmm. of the house, I don't want him going in the house. Right. Okay. You know, so, but I'd like so to bring him in. Let, let's, let, let's, let's get out of my interruption and then y'all okay. can proceed. Sure. I just wanted to give you that option if you yeah. wanted to scale that back a little bit, but if you don't, because you're wanting to kind of communicate whatever, then. Well, do, but I yeah. don't want to sound like a, a no, no, no. person. I, you, it just sounds a little odd, but so right. far I'm like... Like, you, you would know that everything you've said, he would find suspicious. He would find a little a little weird. But, I mean, you're That's obviously so a you're federal so agent, so I have no problem. Right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not suspicious of that. I just um, think you're, whatever you're up to is odd. Right. I think at this point... <laughs> I'm going to drive around. The um, now, you guys don't have... Her like wired for sound, right? Right. 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 No. You're just sort of. And you can, you've and you just can been there for a couple of minutes. You can read the. the no, bottom I don't have any human movement. intelligence. I do. I do. I have ten. Yeah. I'm have gonna. Ten. Yeah. So, for, looking from the other car, you can kind of tell body language. They're the the gist of the back and forth. Drive, drive, drive over. I'm in a different car. No, I'm in your car. Yes, yeah, so you said her ride. No, I thought you said you were in her I'm hissing at yeah. her and trying to tell her things, but she can't hear me because I'm the wrong I'm car. car. Okay, well... I'm going to tell you to drive around. Drive. drive wait, around. why don't we just get out and pretend drive. that no. we're trying to buy a house? Drive a... Okay, well, they're <laughs> arguing. I'm going to suggest yeah, that you go... Well, no, we want to look at the house because we heard it. It might be Check sense. the scene. No. Uh, of the house? Go over there. Yeah, that's... We're going to kill himself, aren't we? Yeah, go over there. I just, okay, uh, well... So... This other Every car. car. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no, we're gonna pull. We're gonna park. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna park ways. closer. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and how are how are you dressed generally? Like, what is, what what is the obvious? What, what do you what do your characters look like? like um, very b- b- business suit or like business. I'm business casual, even on my off days. Mm-hmm. Okay. My clothes are mm-hmm. like. They're casual, they're not like sloppy, and they're as clean as they can possibly be being washed in a truck stop laundry room. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're worn, but they're not obviously like tattered or anything like that. Okay, so yeah, all right. Good. So by the same token, or by the other side of that, neither one of them looks like the federal agent. No, that, yeah. Very clearly, no. <laughs> all right, well, let's just read. Um, uh, and I'm not sure they're together yet, so I'm not going to. 
you're probably, I mean, they were both they drove dri- driving, both kind of looking at, e- at each other in the opposite cars and looking at the thing, and then, you know, so when, yeah, when she see. stopped, they sort of noticed her stopping and then had words and drove away and whatever, so, so they're not going with anybody. Yes. Oh. And I'm over there pretending I'm interested in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm rolling my art my eyes just as hard as I can. Yeah, I um, heard this house just became vacant. Wait, Shut this up. house? You're you're at the house. Oh yeah. Uh, like, yeah yeah we'll no like, I'm not like like we pulled up near and I'm pretending yeah, that yeah, we're and I'm ignoring that we're people looking for a house. house. I'm, I'm gonna be like Stanley, Stanley, Molly, <laughs> come here. I'd like to introduce you to Agent Dresser. Dressner. Dressner. Agent Dressner. Dressner. Aaron Dressner. Agent Aaron Dressner. Um, yeah. Stanley. PhD. Okay. BA. <laughs> PhD. PhD. Or MD, I guess, not PhD. PhD. I'm MD. Molly. MD. D- d- doctor group. Molly. Right. Um, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to go check out the Well, house, I just thought since you, yeah. you know, were, you were friends with uh, oh, our associates, friends, yeah. colleagues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, we basically have been trying to find out, you know, more about the, the house. Is this related to a case of yours, or? We're... Well... One of our... One of our hobbies is ghost hunting. No, shut oh up. My God. <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> um, we're we're just no, yes, we're, we're just <laughs> investigating black. Yeah, Digital yes. Marshall Black. Mm-hmm. You can call me Emma. Stop. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, just <laughs> mentally noting that to <laughs> look up who the hell this person is and what they're up to. Um, no, but but since you. you You've obviously done some some footwork on the the agent, and so I thought maybe mm-hmm. if we could share information um, somewhere else. Sure, if yeah. I knew. Sharing. Why don't we go and sit somewhere and? Uh, oh, it's not important. Let's just yeah, go elsewhere. <laughs> somewhere else. I go where you buy off of that one too. <laughs> Do Apparently. you? Yes. <laughs> let's go. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just say let's get out of the neighborhood because it's very weird for us to stand out here talking. That's yes. uh, weird for me. I, got, yes. I was sent here to do Well, this. let's just go talk somewhere. Uh, okay. Anywhere else. Oh, I sure am thirsty. Gosh, uh, let's get some coffee. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'm, this is weird enough, but I'm intrigued. Um, <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay. So, All right, so what, I, we're going to go hey, to hey, the... Hey, by the way, I'm, I'm, I may not have conveyed it in the, in the handout there, but the... the the, imp- the imputation should have been that Donnelly was a Delta Green agent. Okay. And, and okay. it just occurs to me that that, that, that I may have I may have skipped, he was skipped on one that. Of us. So gotcha. that's, that's my okay. bad. If, okay. if that wasn't clear. Yeah. You're not. You don't know. I, I didn't I get that in that, that per se, but I did get it from, me, from, from, from the right. information yeah. that he so, got. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But I my character has no idea. But I know. Yeah. So uh, I assume. Sure, I will follow you guys okay. wherever you're going. All right. And yeah, in in once we get in the car, as soon as we're moving, I'm gonna call. <laughs> Did you look at her badge to confirm? Yeah, I didn't. I would have had to pass. So you know where. Did, or did you actually show him your badge? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have. I would have. No, no, no. I would have shown him your real badge that. or the fake one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, no. yeah, I'll call her in just to to confirm she's legit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I just want to say that if you show him your badge and he does what he's doing, then that means that your superiors are going to know that you're nowhere near your jurisdiction. In that case, it's in this case, it's okay. No, 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 for anybody who calls in, exactly what I would want them to have, you know, no more than that. Right. But yeah, so we'll go to whatever, wherever, Starbucks diner, whatever you yeah. want to go to. Okay. All right. So, oh. so we have the 
I mean, you we, probably, we, we're going to have to. While you're driving, you might want to concoct your <laughs> cover story. Yeah. Because so far it's not it's so bad. We might have done that first. <laughs> um, Maybe. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just, I feel like we need more information about the house before we go in it. Since it obviously says that it can affect you know. Well, we don't know if it can for sure. Well, no, we we're don't. It's one of the things going there to find out. Know. A string of suspicious suicides doesn't necessarily mean anything. Necessarily. However, music. I mean, the. I guess I'm a little, you know, unsure about. The last this. person who lived there lived there for a year. I mean, should we have just gone in the house? Previous it just to seemed mm, silly to do no, that first. Sorry. Sure. Who are, the, who are these other people? Now, typically, would, can we call them for information, or do we call them when we're in a jail? The people who were well, given to I us and pre programmed on my cell phone. I would think that we would call them either if we thought they would have, like, parapsychologists, sure. No, like, like we, w we would call these people if we had a situation where we needed their expertise. Yeah. If they could help us, like, if know we something. If we find something old that's really weird or suspicious, mm -hmm. we could take it to the antique dealer. If there's strange wrapping on the walls, we call in the parapsychologist. From the windows, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should get the parapsychologist to go in there with us. Well, we might want to call right? him and see if there's been anything reported around there. Yeah. Other than and if we feel like we need a tank that's had concrete poured into the engine, so then we what? would go to the storage unit. So, what? That was confused. That what? Because you never know what's going to be in there. Oh. So, I mean, I mean, obviously, see, but you can't, I mean, to bring up care. See, that's why I hate that he's not in Delta Grim, because, like, he's not going to have any knowledge, like, he's not going to believe any of so, the paranormal. So, the normal modus operandi for this sort of situation is that we limit his knowledge, we come up with a clandestine cover story that has nothing to do with the paranormal, if we're going to involve them in this. Something other than buying the house. Maybe well, that there were, like, um, drugs? some odd, maybe, I don't know, uh, noxious fumes or something... That made the house potentially unsafe. So if we if we know Donnelly was if we no because then the DEA would be called. Mm -hmm. We have to come up with something sort of in our jurisdiction. Okay. If we know Donnelly was part of uh, Delta Green, mm -hmm. then we know <coughs> that he's been called away. We know that he's a coworker, so he's probably knows that Donnelly got called away sometimes on missions. So we use that information to come up with our cover story. Donnelly, your uh, U.S. Marshal Donnelly uh, was on a separate assignment a while back to help you chase down a fugitive. We never found them. Uh, Donnelly called you, gave you, uh, made you think that the fugitive might have been hiding in this house at some point, and then he mysteriously, when he went to check it out, committed suicide, and now we're here to investigate that. And that's the lie we tell you! Alright, so let's fast forward to your sure. Starbucks meeting, and that's, that's what they just that's the right here. Cool. Okay. Um, so, uh, this can make me think back to the coroner's report, and all of its hedging, and seems consistent with yeah, well, there, there wasn't an actual, like, straight razor there, by the way. No murder weapon yeah. was found. Yeah. Or right. Or yeah. suicide weapon. Right. So that's all very weird. So if you're saying that he was involved with a case of yours, looking for a fugitive, and he was going to that house, is this a kind of terrorism thing? Or? Maybe. Well, she was Maybe. from the United Arab Exactly. <laughs> that's my first thought. See, it could be. Middle East. Uh -huh. uh, huh, well, then that... So there's some other preliminary investigations that we would like to conduct, but why don't you tell us... So wait, and how are we explaining these two? 
<laughs> I, get, I get the whole other stuff, that makes sense. But who are these? So why, why, why is the VA doctor here why telling me what to do? <laughs> and, um, the homeless child. <laughs> I'm kind of at a loss on that stuff. It's, it's consultant. It's I'm a consultant. Yes, consultant. Um, Consulty. The, uh... This guy likes to cut people up, so I'm here to put people back together. Um, they've, uh, they've just been helpful on previous cases, um, and so I brought them in. Okay. Um, I am in reserve. They don't look. They don't look like they would be helpful, probably. But but, but, like but they are. They're very helpful. Not mental performance either, but yeah. Um, can I see where's the sheet? Very, very Which one? Oh, and I buried underneath all my other papers. You can search for it. Okay, I'm going to um, <laughs> excuse myself to make a to make a um, a call. I need to I need to check in. And I'm going to step outside and I'm going to call Emil Yero and see if he can meet us at the house. But I'm gonna tell him he can't like show up being a parasite. <laughs> just, just like don't, don't bring the ghost. Well, he's um, uh, like, General keep, keep is a, he, he's like an associate professor of abnormal psychology at Colton College, which is two towns Perfect. over. Yes. And, um, all right. So so you call him and mm -hmm. he uh, he doesn't recognize the number that he answers. I mean, you're you're what all you know about him is that he's sort of potentially an asset, but he doesn't really know much of what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. but he's presumably trustworthy he's as an consultant. asset because he's, yeah, he's a consultant. He's very consultant. Okay. Well, um, I'm gonna, um, honestly, we yeah. might need to do, have a specific thing in mind for him before we call him in. You think? Not Probably. just bring him into the house, mm -hmm. like yeah. have him go in with us. No, because that potentially <laughs> makes Asian a we, lot more messy. We do not well, know what we're going to find. If we in don't there. know what we're going into, and, and if we, we bring kill a another person, person who doesn't know, then that's just more collateral damage that we would uh, have. To. Okay, so we're going into the house, just un unknown. Just no, we're going to do the. Mommy. We're going to do huh? research for research. <laughs> I knew you had this conversation from me. Well, no, no, no. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this. That, yeah, I don't. I don't I'm know. just bad. They might. Them. They might have had some of this sure has the car right the over. Yeah, that, that, that I'm just. Sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to my character that you, why you don't want to go in. This. Mm, not safe. Yeah. Not safe. It's very not safe. Not potentially not safe. Probably, possibly not safe. <laughs> not a safe house. Mm. We're just not sure. We just have some more work that we'd like to do outside the house before we actually go in. Could be dangerous. To disturb anything, draw any attention. Everything. Get eaten by something. Well, what? I eat them out. But <laughs> you just have to come. All we're really yeah, going to do is go to the town of Rutgers to try and get more see, information on, get the, more information on yeah. the house. Do you think the house is relevant to Dobby's death? Possibly. It could be. Yeah. Might it be. is an odd There was a previous suicide in the in the house before. Well, so are you thinking this is not a suicide? Well, we're just we're investigating, huh? We're sure you might be. Well, you know, the lack of the lack of weapon on the scene is pretty. Go on. Go on. Good job. The lack of a weapon. Yes. At the scene suggests not suicide. Since who would remove the weapon? Yeah. So we just want to, you know, do some more. We know that the previous two owners of the house also. Died. Came to accidental deaths. There was one. Uh, so one Yamil Yamil is already from the United Arab Air. Well, yeah. you already know all of this information, right? Yeah. 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 You know, she. I'm trying to wrap my head on what you're suggesting. You're suggesting the bodies. Maybe. Could be. Perhaps. Maybe. Yeah. We're Probably. Well, we don't know. And we're just gonna we're, we figure it's prudent to check out to get as much information as All right. Well, I mean, I'll try. I guess in that case, I'll plan to go home and arrange to meet you tomorrow at some point here at the house at noon. What do you do? You guys want? You said you wanted to go and look into. Yeah, we're gonna look at, look into the records of the, of the house. 
right. Yeah, let me just call you. All right. Well, sure. I need to wrap this up as quick as I can. Sure. All right. Well, then <laughs> thanks for talking. Oh, uh, you're buying. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Specifics, but they had a weird day. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'll, you know, tell her as much as I can. Yeah. She yeah. knows. About, I'm sure we can talk about Donna's death. Yeah. I yeah. Look into it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, she's she's accustomed to it. There's, yeah. there's some things you can talk about and some things you can't. Yeah. And most of them, I'm talking about four. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the rest of that evening, the three of you, what are you doing after he leaves? Looking up as much as we can on the house, I guess. Is it closed? Is it closed yet? The Hall of Records? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a county done. office. They close at like yeah. three. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, then I guess we'll go to the hotel room and tremble until Willem. Uh, I'll drive to the storage unit just to take inventory. Okay. That's a good idea. See what sort of yeah, I'll go with assets you. we have. I'll go too. Since Along both there. of my potential rides are going. Tune in on Cartoon Network and <laughs> So, Meadowbrook Store It is a small lot south, a few miles southwest of. The house on Spooner Avenue. Uh, it's uh, about 50 big storage sheds or clusters of them surrounded by a 12 foot fence topped with uh, razor wire. Um, there's a single trailer that serves as the office and you know, a rolling chain, you know, rolling fence or a gate in the chain link fence. To get in and out, um, there's a little buzzer that's on the outside of the fence that signals the, the office when somebody needs to come out if they don't notice you're there. Um, and then, uh, and, uh, and, that and there's a, there's a, did there's you a, get a key to the storage <laughs> unit? Um, no. Scene at the at the new store at the, at the store at facility. Okay. If, if it, it's it's late in the day now, it's probably nighttime now. Um, so the so Is I think the, the the thing's probably uh, uh, the uh, gates the yeah, gates going to be closed at this point. So yeah. probably in your experience, renters probably have a share have each each gets a copy of the key to the to the front padlock mm-hmm. that they just change out every so often. Um, to get access in and out, and then uh, and then of course each of the each of the lockers is probably locked on its own. Okay. Well. Does uh there's like you know, does it look like particularly like heavy security like surveillance cameras or whatever? Yeah, there's some, there's a few cameras, a couple of cameras. There's like one down each aisle in between the the buildings, something like that. Or, or on the corners of the buildings. It's not. It's not really, really, really heavy coverage. Mainly, just just enough for you know, just enough for uh, liability purposes. It seems kind of odd that there's 50 storage units, but this is unit number two two three zero. Well, it's unit cluster twenty two number thirty. So it's probably mm-hmm. in the back. The company has, has or lot, the company has other 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 lots. Uh, okay. How are we gonna get in? Not tonight. <laughs> Without a key. Is there a key to the actual storage unit or no? No. No. Oh. Well, that's gonna be tricky. Yeah. It is. Unless we just wanna 
break in, but if we break in, then it's just going to draw attention to the storage unit. What do you do for lock picking? I have lock picking for 20. I have 20 in lock picking. A actual, actual locksmithing craft? Yes. Well, no, I have, it's, it's my craft. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, well, I mean, in that case, like that's full on lock smithing. Oh. So you can, if you want to just know how to pick locks, that kind of depends on your character's background. Okay. So there's so like with your character, I mean, I would, I'd say that if you figure your character would know how to do that with her experience, I think I'd go along with streets. that. She's just been and, breaking um, into people's stores. So what you sure. what you could do is is sleep. what you could do is write down on the back of the sheet somewhere. Like in the mm -hmm. notes okay. or personal, whatever. So, so Amber, for your character, write down on the back of the sheet, you know, special mm -hmm. whatever, tra special training and lock picking, and that just becomes a dexterity test. Okay. Um, and so, uh, Tabitha, since you've got actual locksmithing skill, then you could do that with the dex test as well, but you could also, you, know, you could take a lock apart and rebuild it okay. from scratch, you know, you could, you could actually, you know, you, you know, you know, a you lot know about, about how lock, locks work too. Right? Inside and out. Yeah. Gotcha. It's much broader than just knowing how to pick a lock. Okay. So we can try that. And, and, and sometime. in your car trunks, you probably have the, the things you, you might have the bolt cutter. Bolt cutter. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be a lot more suspicious than you trying to pick the front gate lock though and just pretending you have a key and, 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 and having trouble it. with it yeah okay should we do that it's night it seems to try i mean if the place is deserted what's the worst that could happen we all go to jail and get free food and health care for no, let's do it <laughs> Who, who's got the best alertness i got a 40. Mm. 50. yeah roll uh you make an alertness roll what do I you know what? It's, percentile. it's percentile dice, and you want to roll that skill number or less. Oh, uh, whoops! <laughs> and uh, in this case, add add twenty to your skill. So what you need, all you need is a seventy or less. Forty-eight. Okay, so you um, the the uh, the the trailer that serves as like an office. Um, there's I mean there's lights on in, in on inside it, but there's probably lights twenty four hours a day in there, but. You see it, it, it sort of, you see it sort of shifting like there's somebody in there moving around. Hmm. Okay. Um, can we pretend we've lost our keys and go ask them to open it for us? They probably did that a lot. We need an ID. Mm. Yeah. Ask the person who rented it. Mm. Um, so we could do it, somebody could do like, go over there and make sure that like he doesn't come out and then maybe if you see that he's gonna come out like distract him somehow. Hoot like a giraffe. Hmm? Hoot like a giraffe. Is <laughs> now is he inside is this trailer inside the complex or is it outside? Right. Like is inside. it behind the lock gate that we're trying to mm -hmm. Hmm. Well I'm gonna go and try to stealthily open the open the lock. Oh, there's a buzzer at the gate. Mm -hmm. Oh, to get in? Yeah, to call us in, probably. To, to call the office and tell them that, hey, you need, okay. you need help. Hey, we we lost our gate key. Can you let us mm -hmm. in? She should do that since she's so persuasive. I'm super persuading. How persuasive are you? 90. That's pretty damn persuasive. It's a lifetime of persuading. To okay. Me. To part with their money. So hey, I guy, guy. Hey, change. <laughs> Yeah. Or not arrest me for vagrancy. Okay. So you're buzzing him. Bzz, bzz. Um. Okay. Um, you see the like the little blinds in the window crack and somebody looks out. And, and, uh, smile and, I... and um all right, so uh the so he comes out and um it's uh the worker comes out and it's, shiftless looking, you know, hit in his early baby. 20s and says, uh, looks at the three of you, and, uh, and I hope you... Mm -hmm. I'm picturing the, yes. the fast food kids in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, uh, we... Well, yeah. we, we would like
right to access our storage unit, please. But, yeah, so, can you just storage unit, please? Oh, okay. He unlocks the gate and opens it for you. <laughs> <laughs> easy enough. Okay. That was Off easy. <laughs> All right. Let's go find our storage unit. Thank you. Mm hmm. Okay. So, we're going to make our way around to the unit. Mm hmm. Is there, so. Is there a, a key up. hidden under a convenient room? Nope. Is it locked? Yep. With what kind of lock? A padlock? Mm -hmm. Padlock. All right. I'm gonna combination I'm gonna... or a key. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I don't know. Make a luck roll. Roll a flip a coin or roll a die. If it's odd, that's combination. Yep. Combination. Is the combination still written on the back? Nope. <laughs> Is it two two three zero? Well, try it. Nope. Nope. Um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to. I've seen these types Is of locks before. Is it Donnelly's birthday? To, oh, it's not this lock. I'm gonna um just try to open it, like you know. Let's take it. Pick it. Pick it. Did I do it? So it's a Dex. For 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 this kind of lock, I mean it's a combination lock. You need to like have a stethoscope Kings. or something to be able to hear the tumblers doing their thing. I have one of those in my trunk. Okay. Make an intelligence test. Intelligence times five or less. If that succeeds, you have a... You have a and I'm a doctor. Yeah, yeah. 34. You are a, I, doctor. I am a doctor. I have one hanging around my neck right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Roll, so roll... Uh, make, another, make another intelligence roll. Intelligence times five for your um, oh. listening to the tumblers. And another thing to keep in mind is that if you make a successful roll... And you roll doubles on the roll, so if you're like an 11 or 22 oh, yeah. or 33, that's a critical success. Right. So, oh, okay. Oh, so it's not the 10% no. or whatever, no. No, ooh, I failed that one. If you not fail double. with double, with, no, with matching mean. numbers, that's a fumble. No. Yeah. So give yourself a check mark when you fail. Well, no, because it's just a couple of checks, it's not just feel. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, you work at it for a while, but, but there's... there's okay, ball cutters. <laughs> Uh, all right, you snap the lock and open it up, like you have to roll the, you know, the the shutter. roll top roll top things up to uh, to get in. Um, and unless you want to, unless you want to only roll it like a foot high or something like that and crawl in, that's up to you. No. Inside the locker is tons of stuff. There's an antique table. A sofa bed that's currently rolled up. Um, two plastic wrapped twin mattresses. Hey, you wouldn't be saying that if you had to hole up in here for a while. Three uh, three empty biohazard containers, like sort of small barrel size. Mm. Two bags of uh, actually those are probably the big ones. Two bags of quicklime. <laughs> Two new shovels, four pairs of new work gloves, and a new hat lamp, 14 uh, quart size metal containers of gasoline with four spouts, two new plastic gasoline containers, three newly minted keys taped together uh, in a, on a piece of cardboard. A bunch of boxes of 12 gauge uh, shotgun shells. Um, sorting through all that, I'm not done by any means, but sorting through all this uh, takes time and you need light. You guys know instinctively, like anybody that's looking around is gonna see the thing open and see light coming, you know, I guess you have the overhead light that you flipped on, right, to be able to see yeah. all this. So yeah. you should shut the door. So okay. So is I got cars looking? right in front of this, though. Well, yeah. That doesn't mean car. anybody needs I to. I suspect you came in one car. Yeah, yeah, we came in one car. That's one of the hotels. Right? All right. It doesn't. Uh, just because they see that there's a car pulled up doesn't necessarily mean that we want people to see what's in here or what we're doing with it. Right. So I think we should shut the door. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, two, uh, Mossberg shotguns, 
Chunk, what kind of firearm skills do we have? 40. 50. Um, you have fer forensics, uh, Emma? Uh, yes, 30 forensics. Yeah, all right. You notice that the serial numbers have been shaved off the shotguns. Sweet. Uh, there's uh, various fake identities. Um, all with uh, Special Agent Donnelly's photo. There's a Meadowbrook gas inspector badge, a coroner's office identity, tons of others. All of his. Uh, Nikon F36 telephoto lens, Nikon reflex camera. Um, the remains of two dozen burned photographs. Hmm. Can you make out with what's on any of the photographs? A few, several of them seem to have like trace images of the, the Spooner Avenue house, but that's that's all you can make out. Yeah. That's. Um, okay. He's got a uh, a scattering of torn notebook pages that are sort of bound together with. Uh, File, file thing, yeah. Uh, filled with a, a scrawl of, of handwriting. Um, really, like, random, sort of nonsensical statements, a lot of them, and some of them not. You know, just somebody's, some his, his notes he'd been making for himself. And a uh, small, four foot long, uh, very dirty wooden coffin. Four, four feet long. Oh, so a child's coffin. Yep. A, a dirty wooden child's coffin. So yep. something that got dug up. And uh -huh. quick lime. Yeah. Is it open? You opening it? Well, I mean, like, does it? Yes. Yes, I'm opening it. Okay. Uh, inside are the uh, rotted to the point of disintegration remains of a. Uh, of of a child's body and a small little a, there's a little metal plaque on the hasp that uh, identifies the name as Anton Touré and everybody it's it's decomposed enough there's not much smell but everybody gets to roll sanity anyway <laughs> okay. so we'll against your current sanity mm -hmm. oh Jesus 52 that's a failure 69, that's also a failure. I pass. 30. It's just some bodies and some guys. And I know that. Dude! <laughs> Seeing any corpse reminds me of my own imminent demise. My remembering her being more Catholic. Do you think about that? Actually, you know what? You don't. You're you're, you're adapted to violence, aren't you? Yeah. And that counts for you in this case. Okay. So you don't you don't. Oh, dead children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My whimpering and twitching deepens. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Because you needed more of that. Yeah. Okay, so I've got an antique to table, a sofa bed. Two ma twin mattresses, empty biohazard bags. Three containers. Are they containers. recently emptied biohazard bags? No, they're like no. Or are they new? Haven't been used yet. Okay. Okay. Clean them. Shovels and work gloves. So Here it says new, but I'm pretty sure they're not new because of the yeah. digging yeah. up the coffin. Yeah. yeah. I'm. I'm gonna pull up my phone real quick and do a Google shirt search on this kid. You don't you don't turn up anything about an Ada, uh, an Anton Touré. I but did. then again, you're not all that good at Every looking for background on people. Yeah. Hey, why don't 
you, Miss Lady. Do you have mm -hmm. uh, Do you have archaeology as well as anthropology? No. Mm -hmm. Anthropology. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. okay. No. Mm -hmm. no. Archaeology is helpful too, depending how old things are. Anthropology is not a lot. No. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Culture this child probably came from. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what's involved. Well. You worked some crazy oh, magic yeah. with Google before. Why don't you try and All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my history <laughs> mm -hmm. skills to uh, mm -hmm. try to use his smartphone Lighting. for him because kids these Lighting. days don't know how to do research. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Anton <laughs> Touré. <laughs> yeah, Anton Touré. There's uh, you know, died in no, 19 on. Come on. died in 1965 and. Uh, it's it's far enough back that you, you know, you're not finding any details there. You need to you need to look at yeah, other sources, like sources from the era. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you probably you could probably dig up that he died in 1965. Was mm -hmm. nine years old. Um, parents, you know, on on whatever ancestry.com or yeah. findagrave.com or something like that. Um, the uh, uh, Parents uh, Adam and Rebecca Touré, a uh, look like a sister Elise Touré. Okay. Does as well. Continued search on the sister turn anything up? Yeah, she lives in Oakland. Contract attorney. Um, Not a lot there. That's still naturalized there. American citizen. Okay. From where? Uh, Canada. That's the second foreigner we've turned up in this house, though. Or in this case, anyway. Andrea Falcone might have been Italian. Could have been. So you've been sifting through stuff for probably a couple of hours here. Okay. Yeah. And what are you doing? So it's pretty late at night at the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've got a lot of information here. Yeah. Let's, uh... Take the guns. And the keys. And the keys. Like, was there anything written on the cardboard they were taped to? No. But they could be useful. It's worth yeah. taking them. Oh, you know what? Screw it. Yeah. It, it, it was uh, the number 1206 was written on the cardboard. See? Take the keys. Okay. So, the Spooner house. Okay, so we have keys to the house. Let's, uh, yeah, take the keys, we'll stick the shotguns and the, the a couple of cases of shells in some bags, and, uh... What do you do, you with, what do, you do with the chopped off, um, padlock? Kind of hang it back on, I guess. Um, Are there any other lock in there? I mean, do we have any lock replacements we could put on? Why don't we leave her here and go to a Walmart and buy another lock? Why me? Why leave me here? There's a body right why, there. Why me? Why? Because there's a body right what there. What the shit? Why are you leaving me? Here? <laughs> right, I'll stay body. with you. Here. All right, drive, I'll go. So you drive your car, go get one. Replacement. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you go out to the front gate and it's closed and. No, I don't know. He wouldn't. He wouldn't have locked it back yet because he knew you guys were going. So I guess he'll. He'll, he'll, uh, it's, you know, you can roll the gate out of the way and drive out, and then... Okay. Then just say, when you come back, that you left your cell phone in the unit. Cell phone, right. Not two friends. <laughs> okay. Not two friends in a course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, wasn't she the one that talked to the guy? Yeah. Oops. So I'll just, uh, Do you have a driver's license? No! Why would I have a driver's license? Well, he knows he saw we were together, so right. So yeah, I mean we were all there. He might come back. Yeah, and replace the lock. There aren't any issues with a different lock. Why don't you come back with like a Big Mac bag or something? Um, we need a cover so story for this nameless <coughs> kid who doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, as Emma's away. A few minutes after she leaves, you two are you two the two of you are in the, the locker, is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Um there's a uh a, a knocking on the door, like the, the roll up door. And 
you hear the the work the the, the kid who works here say, uh, uh, "Hey, you in there?" Yes. Mr. Migliani said I need to. He said he needs to talk to you. Who is that? He's the owner. Yeah. Oh, no. See on the phone or? Yeah. Okay. What's his number? We'll call him. You hear him. You hear him say on the phone. They said they want to call you. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, here. I thought you meant in the office. Uh, no, no, he's on my, he's on the phone here. Okay. Mm. You should talk to him. Okay. <laughs> yes. You know, in case just I'm sure that after we opened it up and saw there was a body, we then quickly closed the casket again. Sure. So it's not just an open right. casket. No, it's a closed dirt <laughs> casket. Exactly. So, yeah. dirt that it's it's open because there's dirt all over the floor. Exactly. Now. Yeah. I'm gonna. Well, you can guess it. Just say just open. Just pull it halfway open, duck yeah. under. Pull it yeah. halfway open, duck mm-hmm. under, and then shove it. How can I help you? <laughs> okay. He kind of he kind of squints and but uh, he hold, he hands the phone up. Okay. And. Uh, and uh, this the, the, this voice says, uh, 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 "My name, my name is Migliani. I'm the owner there. That that unit has not been paid in months, oh. unless you unless unless your relatives and you want to re up the lease or something like that. That unit belongs to me. So either sign the paperwork or go home." Ah, uh, we would be more than happy to sign things. Um... You related to to do you related to this uh, to this fella? Very, extremely related, very persuasively related. <laughs> All right. Well, then go with uh, go with Jimmy and uh, and 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 give give yes. and give him give him the money. Okay. All and, right, and, and uh, that. awesome. Thank you very much for. Contacting, great, good, good, good talking. And I'm gonna hang up the phone and say, "We'll be back in the morning to." No, we've the got the cash. Let's just she has the cash. Not out there. Okay. She has the cash. I don't have anything. We'll be back in the morning to sign the uh, to re up the lease and, and make sure all those are paid and, and square and and you know taken care of. Okay, Mr. Migliani said you have to leave if you don't if oh, you don't pay up on it. Though. We're, yeah, we're going to leave, and we are going to pay up on it. We're doing both of those things. Yes. Soon. Okay, I have the paperwork in the office. Okay, uh, let me just finish up in here, and I can meet you out there in just a few minutes. Persuasively. All right. <laughs> All right. He goes. He goes back to the uh, back to the office. And in a couple of minutes, you come back with new dial. Right. I'm hey. laying on the floor, like twitching and coming. <laughs> All right, let's get the stuff and get out of here. It's very stressful. Well, okay. no, we need to pay these we, people. We need to pay these people. Otherwise, they're going to. Okay. Have, have you ever seen the show? Uh, I, I don't know. The one, the one where yeah. they, like, break <laughs> open unpaid. Let's see what they're called. Yeah. That's the last thing we need to have happen here, especially with our fingerprints all, right. all over how, that casket. How much did he say? How much we had? My, my fingerprints all over that casket. Probably it's no more than a hundred bucks. Couple of months. All right. Uh, all right. So I'll go up to the front. We're gonna go up there and. and how much? How much do we owe on the? Uh... Oh, oh yeah. Here, uh, if you wanna just. Uh... Uh, fill out the fill out the the transfer of paperwork and and I'll need to see identification to confirm your relationship with the with the deceased and uh, and then it's twelve hundred dollars. Holy shit! So who, whichever of you is whichever of you is is, uh, is uh, whatever whoever is related to him, you can you can fill this part this page out. Twelve hundred dollars. What kind of identification are you going to need? What kind of twelve hundred dollars? Driver's license right? or Christ. okay. Well, how about something? This identification and I pull 
one of my own personal hundreds out of my wallet and hand it to the Bryce, kid. Bryce, please don't try bribery. He's a kid. He doesn't care. That's true. It's a hundred dollars. That's like a week's pay for him. Okay, you bribe him and I'll persuade him to take it. <laughs> What's your angle on persuading him? I don't have identification. <laughs> Gosh, it sure would be convenient. To do <laughs> My ID on me right now. We just, just yeah, we don't have this uh, right now. So right. Right. Just, just so who who fill, so who who's filling out the paperwork, and what name are you putting on there? Uh, I will fill it out and put Rebecca Donnelly on there, sister, definitely sister, persuasively a sister, All right. in law. Um, no, not at all. Sister, no, sister, sister's good. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, he goes along with that, and uh, and uh, you know, no, you checks the little checks the little box that he's supposed oh, to I'm check, fine. saying he saw your identity, your identification. And we owed him all of our all of our uh, degree money, and then plus Jesus. plus. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a doctor. I mean, sure, I'm a government doctor, but... You yeah, still make doctor money. Yeah. All right, you pay the bill. This, this is still a lot less money than I expected to drop on this uh, operation so far. Oh, God. Okay. How are you paying him? Cash. Okay. We are paying him? We're using the $1,000? Well, she has Yeah, she has that... Envelope of a thousand. And he's a doctor, so he just carries I, wads of money to throw at hookers all the time. Because yeah. <laughs> we're spending know. the whole thousand dollars. Yeah. He'll pay you What's back. What's the? I mean, all right. I'm not going what's to an the, ATM. Yeah. What is the alternative? All right, all right. What's what's lowest? I'm not what's giving him my credit card. What's lowest for you, intelligence or power? Power. What does power do? Mm-hmm. It's your willpower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's sort of luck and like, yeah. Um, um, yeah, okay. Make a, uh, make a power comp to my pool. Fail. Yeah, you thought about getting a bunch of money out earlier, but it's too lazy to. Okay, so I don't have the extra 200. No. Okay, well, I can go to a... Well, we can, we can give you the 1,000 now, but who carries $1,200? I mean, a 1,000 is reasonable. <laughs> Anybody, any small time operation would so take a thousand in cash oh, yes. and be like, okay, cool. <laughs> well, I would say you guys are really suspicious. Uh, if, if Mr. Migliani doesn't have twelve hundred dollars here, then then it's you know, then that's it for me. I don't I don't decide who owes what here. I'll drive down to the where's the nearest ATM. It's not far. Yeah. I go there, I get the money. How much you get now? Uh your money outside. Five hundred. Okay. ATM rejects you because you can only get out three hundred. <laughs> what does yeah. this look like Greece? <laughs> All right. Then uh, you uh, so you, you give them all your crumpled up bills out of your whatever horrible blood stained envelope full of cash and then uh, why is it bloodstained? Maybe. It's what were you maybe, using that for? Maybe it's it's just just a, a, I know it was a pad maybe, of money. Maybe that's, oh, maybe that's just maybe that's just coffee. Desperation. So <laughs> you could have taken well, some of that out to buy. <laughs> All right. So by the time you finish haggling with uh, with 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 Jimmy the Genius, it's it's probably about midnight. Let's get some rest. We're gonna go, go back to the regal days in. And <laughs> yeah, our suite at the days in. Oh, yes, yeah. I'll sleep on the floor. Good. Okay. 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 You think you get the argument from that? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And why I sleep on the days in floor? Ugh. <laughs> well, it's better than sleeping on the days in sofa. Yeah. So, so the next the next morning, what are you up to? 
Uh, I'm back in the office for, for, for the morning. I'm going to plan on meeting at the house sometime around noon, mm -hmm. which is an hour drive, right? So, just gonna so you're in the office for like two hours. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm going to have to go in. Mm -hmm. So, I go in. Um, anything else I need to follow up on him? Since. Well, now I've got to be curious about the whole house thing. So. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be looking into what I can find, which is probably what they've already found. We what, should go to the Hall of Records. Just like history of the house, what well, built. Okay. I'm wondering yeah. if there's any other crimes that have happened in that area because they seem to imply that somehow it's tied into this fugitive they're after. So I'm wondering if it's like the history of you know, the meth lab. I mean, what's going on with the house? <laughs> um, not, not a meth lab. Um, it, was, it was built in 19. 1910, if I remember right. Uh, 1907, sorry. And uh, by a um, uh, Michael Wheeler. And I'm not looking crimes, for crimes at the address, you don't you don't turn up anything. Okay. Um, deaths at the address, there's a few. Um, I mean, you know. In any 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 house, if you just look for who died here, you're going to find a longer list of people who died sure. there over the years, yeah. right? But right. it still kind of stands out. You know, Andrea Falcone di uh, died yeah. in 2012. There was a uh, uh, previous owner, um, Amanda Amanda Braintree, died in 2008. Uh, suicide. Previous owner, Louis Tycroft, uh, suicide in 2002. Okay, that's already two. Uh, John Tyler, uh, died. previous owner John Tyler died in an accident in 97. Uh, there was a uh, an Aiken who uh, died in a uh, accidental gas <laughs> leak in 92. Another deadly accident, 1990. Suicide in 1988. Like two years apart. Mm -hmm. Five years. years. Apart. Five, five to six years. Oh. 88, 90, 92, 97. Except for recently, it was yeah. more often. Uh, there was a, a fire that damaged the place and, and left two dead in 1980. Uh, Dr. George Weaver. Uh, died in an accident there in 72. As a lay person, <laughs> this must, like, yeah. be crazy. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, mm -hmm. that many deaths. Um, on. Yeah, the suicide, 1971. Uh, 1965, uh, accident that killed a young boy. And uh, 1962, accident that killed one of the Oh, that's probably the corpse we killed. Yeah. Uh, Dre died in 65. Murder suicide in 1959. All right. And um, before before that, it was owned. It was it was owned by uh, Isabel Isabel Wheeler, who died of natural causes. Widow of the guy built it, Michael. Yeah. Okay. For comparison, the house we lived in in Ohio was built in 1902. And four people died in it. And only one of those was a suicide. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a litany of <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most of them accidents. And I'm sure suicide. we get all of that same information. Right. The next day when you're out. Okay. Yeah, the next morning y'all yeah. were going to the county the county right. records office and yeah. we're gonna poke around and yeah, you can you can get you can turn turn the, the laundry list up sifting through the old files. Um, all right. The you know the newspaper board for the Middlebrook like Sparrow. Needs to burn. Well, well, so yeah. My thing now is now I'm just intrigued by that, which is weird. I mean, statistically, mm -hmm. that's ridiculous. It's mm -hmm. way beyond what it should be. Yeah. If 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 you were the insurance adjuster for that house, you wouldn't go anywhere near it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we still need to figure out what Donnelly actually died from. What the source of this threat is, 
<laughs> Exsanguination, like this, I'm guessing. It was this, well, you've seen I the mean, photo. I don't know if you showed them the photo, no, but it was no, like no. this this spray. like spectacular spray across the, the living room or whatever room it was. And my, and my moderate ability, of, my moderate forensic ability mm -hmm. suggests that it was in fact suggestive of and then material so, yeah, cutting. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of exaggerated even for, for even that, like, it looks more like a Japanese spray. samurai movie. Yeah, or Spartan, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. You'd yeah. be surprised. I mean, and especially if you're blood pressure. pressure. There's no, well, that's the there. Right. So, so this is all very, very odd, but it's also, but it's not helping me figure out what's up with Donnie and why, how he's associated with all this. Yeah. Were you calling the the coroner as well? Because you yeah, got an, you, yeah, I want to call. Yeah, I want to know what's up with his. Well, we get more de in depth report. In fact, I'll go by there first thing in the morning. Okay. And talk to you. Yeah. Uh, where's the corner? Here we go. Elmer, Elmer Perkin. Okay. Um, age 55, mm -hmm. lifelong Meadowbrook resident. Mm -hmm. um, but he's the county coroner. And, uh, uh, yeah, he, he, I mean, yeah, you learned pretty quickly. He, I mean, he inspected the. The, the body and um, uh, yeah and and he says it was uh, he says it was it was it was damn strange and uh, that the uh, and especially especially comparing it to the to that uh, that Azari girl who was the, just the owner of the house where he was found there. well yeah 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 she uh, she she died there she died there too I don't know if you, you want to he, he kind of goes through his computer sure, yeah. a bit images until he calls her file up and mm -hmm. shows you the, you know, really gruesome photo of her body and it's like, you know, her corpse is lying on the floor in the exact same room with this massive arterial spray almost in a, an identical looking pattern. Not <laughs> quite, not identical. But, but close but, enough that coincidence again doesn't seem yeah. to explain this. Yeah. And, uh, you Execution know, it, method or something? Mm, Machete? He's I don't know. It doesn't look like a machete. I mean, that, that would have left different kinds of yeah. uh, marks. Yeah. Uh, no hesitation marks on mm -hmm. either one of them, which is which is strange, for especially suicide. especially for uh, especially for a, a female suicide, mm -hmm. statistically speaking. But sure, the yeah. uh, and and let's be honest, you can tell looking at the two of them, she uh, she was smaller, and you'd think would have had way less blood to spill than than he yeah. would. <laughs> But um, when it, did she die? Uh, Sixteen months ago. Okay, so it's been a while. And, uh, yeah, the photos, looking at the way at the the, the blood spray mm -hmm. in both of those, um, there was a uh, there's like a, a wall length mirror. You can tell looking at the photos that that was near you know nearby, and on both of them you can it like. Looking at the way the spray is on the floor and on the wall and on the mirror, there's sort of this gap where the spray didn't hit the mirror, as mm -hmm. if there were, there was something, something in the way. Yeah. yeah, something or someone in the way, given that there's no weapon. Yeah, I mean they obviously looked for footprints and sure, trace trace outs. So you know, police like report, that. there's nothing. Like that. Yeah, yeah, but there obviously was. I mean, I'm not buying the whole... Well, uh, yeah, I mean, Perkins, Perkins says that everybody assumes that I was just sloppy and didn't find, uh, okay. you know, lost the lost the, 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 the suicide weapon, but, uh, you know, I'm telling you, I looked and, and, and there wasn't one there either, I, t either time. I believe it. There's something totally fishy going on here. All right. Um, thank him. I said, yeah. he's from around here. I said, have you ever heard anything about this house? Anything weird? About Spooner? Yeah. I'm sure everybody's heard about Spooner. Oh. Nobody will talk about it. Well, what's, what's, the, what's the story? Well, it, 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 didn't, it, didn't, it didn't like he was the, uh, or even she was the, was the, was the first. Yeah, I, I turned up this list here. I'll start going down my list with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this thing, 2008. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, going back, um, Louis, uh, 
uh, Louis Tycroft. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, 2002. Um, you know, he uh, <coughs> he says it was. Uh, you know, he says he knew. You know, Perkin knew Tycroft. He was a lawyer that handled the estate planning for the Tyler family, mm-hmm. and. Um, and uh, but when he, you know, his death, his death was a was a weird a weird thing too. I mean, he had, he had had a he'd had a, a run in with the police. There was a, a boy came to his came to the house looking to looking to sell newspapers or candy or something. And uh, and and uh, Tycroft Tycroft was uh, sounded like he was having a breakdown and frightened the boy. The police came by. And, they didn't have any reason to any reason to take him into custody, but he uh, a couple of days later he uh, shot himself twice in the chest. With yeah, suicide, the double tap suicide. Yeah, yeah. You see, you see <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, the, that first one would have been damn near fatal on its own. But this sign sound like a. <laughs> and then, uh, so, but Tycroft really wasn't who was a lawyer for the family, but he wasn't who to live in the No murder rate, but yeah. very high accident rate. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, Tycroft, let me double check sure. what was up with Tycroft. Uh, Tycroft, yeah, he had, he had, uh, he had divorced his, divorced his, uh, his wife Emily recently. Uh, had a falling out with his partners, dissolved the practice. He's kind of falling apart. He moved into the. He bought the house himself, moved into it to work uh, on it. Uh, but uh, you know, and uh, yeah, and the the, the Tylers. If it did stretch over such a long period of time, my first thought would be that somebody was like hiding out of the house and killing off the owner. Um, John, uh, who is it? John, John Tyler. Mm-hmm. He, uh, nobody knew him very well. He worked at the, he worked at a market as a night manager, but was kind of an outsider. He moved into town in 93 and, uh, um, but, uh, but he was, he was found, he was found dead in, uh, we found him dead in the house in '97. Uh, it was I mean, we, I, we ruled it an accident, but it was still it was as fishy as a lot of these have been. To be honest, we're just between you and me. The house is locked. He was dead in the master bathroom, and I mean, I won't I won't repeat this out to, to anybody sure, else, yeah. but uh, his he was in a bone dry tub, and his lungs were full of water. He had drowned to death. In a dry tub. No sign of struggle. He inhaled all No, that. nothing. I mean, were? nothing. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's a pl- good question. The plug was in the drain. It was dry. He was dry, except for the lungs? Right. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> and nobody's looked into this stuff. Well, I mean, it's, I'm here, but, but, uh, I'll, uh, I've filled out the paperwork with, uh, right. you know, mm-hmm. with each of these things, but there's only so much I can do if there's sure. nothing to, nothing to show it for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll thank him for all of his help on this and tell him that anything I come up with, I'll, I'll bring it back by. Yeah. My email's going on. Uh, talked about the creases. Yeah. yeah. I'm aching. I got a... No. Yeah. yeah, I mean the uh, before before Tycroft the uh, yeah I mean he says that the Akins moved in uh, they uh, they moved in there wanting to wanting to start a family and just had problems and uh, had did a lot of uh, had to do a lot of a lot of renovations. Um, but uh, part of their work must have gone wrong because uh, they had sprung a gas leak and she suffocated to death. 
Andrea Falcone died from a gas leak. Yeah, uh, there was a Dia, Peter Diaz was a, a a baker who from a, from, from another town, a nearby town, who uh, you know bought the house to to rebuild it. He was a carpenter as well, so but he uh, it um, he moved his family in uh, after a few years. They started. He spent a lot of a ton of money on repairing the house, and uh, and uh, he hung himself in the second bedroom. Had a note pinned to his chest where it was finished. Now, that's weird. Okay, um, if I have time before I'm supposed to get down and meet these guys. I'm gonna look up Isabel Wheeler. There's a gap, it looks like, as far from the, what I've been able to find, there's a gap between the house being built and then the first death in the 59, the first weird death. Where she was mm -hmm. there. So yeah. If there's anything about her, I don't know. Well, where, where, where are you looking generally? Newspaper archives. Okay. Sure, sure, yeah. That's gonna take a while. Yeah. So, and in fact, if you're meeting them at noon, that's probably going to be after you meet them yeah. at the house because you went and it took you're you're talking to the coroner for, for a while. Yeah. Okay. Going and through I all of his old files and reports. And okay. So about yeah. noon, um, the uh, the uh, you three in the morning time you've gotten up, gotten ready. So about mid morning you start being useful. So you've got a couple of hours to kill before you're planning on. Yeah, we probably would have gone to the. Hall of records to find out all the things you just found out. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can you, you, you dig up a lot. Yeah, you can dig up all most of most, most of that stuff. Not all of his anecdotal stuff. No. Right, right. Yeah, just the fact. The house was built by um, uh, Michael Wheeler. And uh, he. What year was that? Uh, 1907. Um, okay. He died in 1910 at a, a work accident at the at the county seat. What sort um, of accident? Was a piece of masonry fell on his head. And um, and uh, his uh, yeah his wife Isabel uh, lived it's, uh, lived in the house that, that he had built for them and she sort of became more and more isolated over the years. You know the town talked about she she kind of had. Con a lot, some social contact with Later. the town, but she she Later. became she became ill and kind of between 1910 1927 was sort of seen less and less. And uh, then um, after uh, uh, in 1927, she uh, sort of resumed socializing. You know, she was in some of the started appearing in some of the social columns again and um, and uh, but there were also there's other stories kind of in the, the gossip pages and things of, you know, apparently she had uh, she she uh, uh, her new caretaker a nurse that had moved in with her and was helping her help, helping keep her healthy you know was a, was a foreigner and from some particularly foreign part of Italy and uh some of her family move in to the house, which kind of irritated the neighbors. And, sure. and um, twenty three, he's like the town as much at all. Yeah. Hmm. And um, so there was kind of growing trouble, and and over the years, um, and uh, and in the in nineteen thirty seven, yeah, basically about nineteen thirty seven onward, she doesn't appear in the in the society pages anymore. The only thing you find is, is, a, is a, apparently there was a, a, a some kind of an, a fight where one of the men living with her, uh, Antonio de Vitelli, was uh, you know, 
at the way that the paper phrased it, you know, had a, a um, accosted and, and had a fight with uh, with some local, you know, good upstanding people. And, uh, yeah, and uh, with a uh, Andrew Harriman and some of his friends. Um, but after that, she seemed to, you know, Isabel kind of withdrew withdrew from. From the town's social life. And when did she die? Nineteen fifty-nine. If I remember right. Yeah, that was the first weird death I had. In Fifty. Life. Maybe it was nineteen twenty-six. Nineteen fifty-six. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was fifty-six when she died. Okay. And she had weird foreigners living with her. Foreigners. It Always the foreigners. Swarth. But yeah, after, I mean, she died in 1956, and that was sort of noteworthy because they had an estate sale. You know, she'd lived in the, in the house for almost, for whatever, 50 years. Almost 50 years, yeah. So, and, and her, you know, she, she was still somewhat wealthy from her husband's estate, but, so there was a big estate sale where they kind of sold all of their, you know, sold most of their furniture and everything to different places. I wonder if that's where that antique table came. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. Um, all right. Well, I guess we'll meet up at the house. Okay. Yeah. So that afternoon, you're in front of the house. All, all of that probably would have taken more than a couple of hours. So yeah. certainly you didn't like meet one of them, say necessarily high noon precisely. No, no, no. But sometime thereabouts. So afternoon, we'll call it mid afternoon. Okay. One of the, in front of the house and yes. Yeah, so um, I'll say, yeah, I don't know how related this could be to anything, but I've run across all kinds of weird stuff about this house itself, which you've brought to my attention. Okay. What kind so of we'll go through the list okay. with you. Yes. Well, you know, and we'll compare notes and I guess by the end of it we're all on the same page well, except for the Delta Green stuff. Yeah, well I'm on the same page that something really weird is going on here. Yeah. yeah. I, have no clue. So, I think that we should proceed with caution. Well, I just don't know how this ties into Donald. But I will tell you about the it's just well, I will was... say I'll tell you that I'm suspicious about I don't think it's suicide. Well he could have been here investigating that. He could have found out what you found Oh, do you out. tell us about the mayor thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'll describe the the gap in the spl- in the splatter mm-hmm. pattern. As if and it was sl- on a mirror? It's in it was in front of a mirror. So there's like a spray across the wall, part and like a drip on the mirror, and there's a gap in more of the mirror. Because if somebody was standing in front of the mirror, yeah, or something, huh? or in the mirror. Well, yeah, and that that could be, you know, why he was here, investigating that. I mean, unless it's I can't see how it would have been a case he'd actually been assigned though. No, well, he could have been that on his own. Some people live that, that sort of thing. He was a little, from what I understand, you know. Yeah, it's a little intense. Unique. Yeah. So, well, yeah, we just need to go in and see what's going on. Yeah, I agree. We're just comparing notes on the bizarre occurrences, and I mentioned yeah, the, no, no, the I weird splatter pattern on the blood. It doesn't look like, from what I can tell, I would think that something or someone was in the way. In the mirror. Well, in front of the mirror, yes. We're in front of the mirror, probably. So what do you do? Uh, I guess we're going to go into the house. <sighs> yeah, we're going to go into the house. Cut by the mirror monster. Why not? We're going to die. Let's split up. Anybody? I'm going to be armed. I'm bringing in. Anyone who suggests die. splitting up in this house is going to be met with a swift kidney punch. Yeah, I'm going to go to the trunk and... Get the guns. Get the stuff. Okay. Get the stuff. Okay. Okay. If you 
came out with a shotgun. Yeah, do, do, let's, let's just yeah. describe specifically what you're doing here. Okay. Would you yeah, we're, yeah. we're parked in front of the house. No, yeah, but it's like house. a. But it's, what do you mean? But it's well, like don't, a driveway. Don't well, the driveway, the yeah, has been described yeah. as I'm being kind of a white I'm driving in the driveway. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is surrounded by trees. You just kind of go down. The guns are at least in the trunk. We yeah. can get them if we need to. Okay. Once he becomes a little bit more comfortable with the idea. Yeah. yeah. Of survival. <laughs> Once you get on board with surviving. Still not hundred percent sure it was a good idea to get this guy involved, but Alright. So the house. Uh, there's there's this sort of vibrant green ivy that grows up the, the outside of it. Just something um, so he doesn't dump the you know, the, the, the property, it's kind of, it's not, it, it's a little shabby because it hasn't been really kept up real well because it hasn't been occupied for the past year and a half, but it's it's not completely gone to seed. There's probably somebody coming out, you know, once a month or something to uh, to just maintain. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a, a front door that you can tell sort of uh, is overlooked by uh, a dining room and uh, what's probably a bedroom. Uh, there's a garage around to the side, and um, and then uh, in the the back of it is the, and the garage has like a um, it looks like it has a, a room that was sort of added onto it on top of the garage, and um, and there's a. The, 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 the back of the house, the backyard, there's sort of a walkway that goes around. There's a porch on the back and and then windows, you know, from other bedrooms and things. I mean, the, the curtains are all drawn, you know, because it's... Is this it's house easily, easily seen by the neighbors? Or is it... Not, not, not easily. I mean, yeah. you know, it's not invisible to them. I mean, right. All that obscured. From from the house here, if you're not paying attention, you don't. It's easy to forget that the neighbors are over there. Yeah. Okay. Is the door locked? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll pull out my key and the one that had twelve oh six written to the cardboard and try it. Okay. <laughs> we have keys to this house. Yeah. <laughs> Continue your mental cataloging yeah. of, of evidence for the inevitable <laughs> exactly. trial and inquest. Exactly. All right. Um, yeah. The uh, the I door mean, the door push. With us when we went to go see the corpse. Of course. The uh, the door the door pushes open into a a small a small foyer. Uh, the porch itself is a simple stone affair, three steps leading up to a small. Uh, to, uh, it's sort of enclosed with iron bars, a uh, little a lamp over the door uh, with a red glass um, whatever shutter enclosure around it. And um, the foyer <coughs> um, is small, actually smaller than, uh, only slightly bigger than the, than the porch itself, but it opens up into it as a, a uh, clo- there's a little closet um, and then uh, a dining a dining room off to the side, and the the, the den directly uh, directly ahead. Single so story or half done? Yeah. Everything's uh, wood wood floored. Um, it's a single story except for the the uh, the room that was added on top of the garage. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah, we know which room the murder was in. Murder that was that room, wasn't yeah. it? I remember something about second story. The second bedroom, the second. somebody hanged himself, I think? Owner. The last owner died in the same room as Donald. Yeah, Mila. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, no, the master bedroom is where the okay. where Donnelly's body was found. Okay. Alright, so you've entered. You're in the you're at the foyer. Um, you uh, You've got a closet, you've got the den, you've got the, what do you call it, the, the dining room. Um, I think I, I mean, slowly making our way through, right? What's the first thing we come to is the, the closet. closet. Yeah. So just kind of open the closet. See what's in the closet. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. All right. So it was Emma Black. Is that right? Uh huh. Okay. So. By the way, is the house first still furnished with Yamilla's belongings, or is it? Um, I think that they're that 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 they're still there, but they're sort of whatever tarped over, and mm. you know. I've got dust gloves. Yeah. Gotcha. As she's oh, no. approaching the closet. Uh, right, I'll, I'll say, hey, hold on a sec, as you walk mm-hmm. over there. What? As you're walking over towards the closet, I'll say, hold on. Okay, I heard that. What? Okay. Do, do I still hear this? Uh, yeah. And, uh, and I'm, I'm actually going to draw my weapon. Oh, uh, oh, oh, we should run, we should run. We should get out of the house and run. If I see you do that, I'm definitely doing that. I say, I'll be right back. <laughs> there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm uh, not running to get the shotguns yet, but so I'm positioned. Running? No, no, no. I said I'm not. I'm not running to get the shotguns yet, okay. but I'm getting prepared to. Since right. I see they're you're backing up toward the door yeah. that you guys just came through. Mm-hmm. You're drawing your pistol. You're. I'm telling nervous. everyone we need to run. We need to run. We need to get out of this house right okay. now. Okay, so obviously that drowns out. You know. Yeah, I'm like, shh. What do you hear? Do you hear? I can see it. I can see it. People arguing. Do you hear it? I don't hear it. <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm going to... In the closet? Well, I'm going to go... Through that door. I'm going to... I'm gonna do my, um, you know, FBI CSF opening the door, sure. like on that, on like the big STB. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna slowly kind of open it, but I'm standing to the side so nothing can. You can uh, okay. the ones in but I've got my, I've got my gun. Mm, my gun. Scary. Yeah. Am I it's a, it's an, em- it's an empty closet. Make a sanity roll. It's oh. an empty closet. I'm not scared though. I'm naked. Okay. You say so, Mr. Hasselhoff. Uh, Lose a point. I'm not doing the Okay. Well, uh, you have no doubt whatsoever what you but, heard. Yeah, I'll say. I'll tell you. It, maybe it's a vent in there or something, but I just heard an arguing voice. Maybe it's like it's upstairs or. I was closer to the closet than you, and I didn't hear anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Two voices, male and female, arguing. And the man said something about a thousand faced moon or something crazy like that. What? Okay, I'm going to file that away. We need to. That's right. Alright, so um, Your in the closet. Um <laughs> That's how she is. Alright, well I guess we'll proceed to the living area. Proceed or the dining room's next, right? There's a dining room off to the side and the den straight ahead. Well where's which way which where the master bedroom was is right ahead because that's where probably yeah, it's, it's gonna be through the den and sort of around the okay, corner. So through the den is Slowly, yeah, through the den, kind of looking around, taking notes. But I do think someone is in the house, though. Well, let's be on our toes. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't holstered my weapon. No. Okay, you guys stay behind us. You sure. don't have any guns or anything. We need to leave and burn this house to the ground. I don't need guns. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> with my nine strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I'm stronger than that. No, I'm not. Just the, the den is. I'm uh, stronger than you. <laughs> the den has a. It's sort of the centerpiece of the house. You know, it's the biggest room in the house. and it, Which isn't. I mean, it's not a huge house, so that's not saying mm-hmm. much. But there's a, a grand fireplace. A uh, little. You know, there's. You can. From the den, you can get through a little. A little nook into the. To the master bedroom and closet for the master bedroom. There's a breakfast nook, a kitchen. Door to the back porch. Um, you know, there, there's a. It, it opens up onto a hallway that leads to other bedrooms. Um, uh, you know, through the. You can see through the uh, near the master bedroom over there is another, other other doors for that's probably the closet, and the, uh, uh, not the closet, the garage rather, and the staircase leading up. Um, the. Uh, most of most of uh, Yamila Asari's furniture is stacked up 
in uh, in the in the den here, you know, sort of put in one place, you know, preparing for dispos moving or disposal or, or whatever. Uh, there's some old styrofoam cups uh, filled with uh, rancid coffee from you know was checked out by the police a couple of days ago. And uh, um, welcome to police in America. Yeah. Okay. So, what uh, actions? What do you? Who's who's doing what? I guess we'll just keep going towards the master. Yeah. Are you following them, or did you stay in the foyer? Oh, I'm safe? not going to be alone in this house. We're going to die. And I'm still, like, periodically, every now and again, whispering to him, we need to leave. We okay. need to get out. We need to run and burn this house down. All right. Um, so, so mm -hmm. I was say, if I notice these stairs as I come around to the breakfast, yeah. Like, yeah. that's going to catch my interest. Yeah, yeah. And as, as, you're approaching the, as you're approaching the master bedroom, I mean, they're, as you can see, they're kind of opposite the master right. bedroom. Oh, and there's right. the stairs leading up. And there's the door to the garage. Right there. Well, let's, I think we should probably stay together, so. Okay. So, yes, I'm going to quietly make my way up the stairs. As quietly as I can, which is a good thing. I'm going to quietly poke my head into the master bedroom to see if the spray is still there, if it's been cleaned up already. Because I'm intrigued by what he said about the mirror. It was intriguing. And I'd kind of like to check that out without him mm -hmm. around. Okay. Um, yeah. So you pass the, uh, uh, you, the, the the kitchen going going into that other mm -hmm. hallway. So and it's it's uh, the kitchen looks kind of ragged and dated. You know, just on first mm -hmm. glance, there's a uh, uh, stove is ancient. The tile is sort of peeling, cracked and yellowed. Formica counters. There's a s slight odor of uh, slight odor like um, rotten eggs. Um, the, the kitchen looks like it's been recently uh, rifled through. There's a garbage bag on the floor. Okay, so you were heading up the stairs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you head up the stairs. You're looking in the master bedroom. Yes. All right. Um, are you turning on lights in here, by the way? That's just the deal. Yeah. Yeah. If the electricity's on, sure. Okay. Yeah. Unless there's enough daylight to see through, see around in. Um, there, there is, there, there is in some, some places, uh, and okay. So when you look in the, in the, uh, master bedroom. <laughs> Uh, there definitely is. There's a couple of, uh, you know, outside um, windows on the other side of it, but the room itself is, uh, it's like wall-to-wall -wall mirrors. Well, th th does that show up in the photo, prior to the photo? Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. So there's um, just mirrors everywhere in this mm -hmm. bedroom? Yeah. Um, it's... <laughs> It's you know it's not a yeah it's not a common style. It's not like those nineteen seventies things where they just the whole wall was a mirror or is it individual it, it, mirrors? It, it might yeah I mean it it, it could have it could have been something like that but I mean I don't know how closely you're looking at them. Well no well, like no, it, is, is it like a, individual a wall mirrors? length mirror that's like in an exercise room or is it like just a bunch of individual mirrors like oh photo, right right no, no it's like built into the walls okay. so the they're walls are mirror surface yeah like the 70s closets you mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the wall the doors and mirrors the and the blood's cleaned up and they're always haunted um yeah i mean the, the stain stain the there's a heavy stain that's but stained. like the blood that was on the mirror it's from the photos it was sprayed against the wall. yeah yeah i think so yeah, yeah. I'm going to start going around and breathing on the mirrors to see if, like, someone had written something on there. 
Okay. Um, you are you just like standing at the entrance <laughs> yes, of the bathroom and making a horrified face at you and, and whispering, "Get out! Get out! Get out!" You uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't. I mean, you don't. You breathe on the on the on one of the mirrors, and you don't see any like interesting patterns emerge from the fog or anything. But you you do notice a uh, like something catches your eye in the air, like reflected in the mirror is a. Uh, uh, and as you're kind of looking from one mirror to the other, it looks like a, a feather floating, sort of twirling in the air. At, uh, and then it's you sort of see it at ground level near the opposite wall, uh, reflected. Yeah, but is it there when I look where it should be in the real world? Nope, make a sanity roll. <laughs> Upstairs. Uh, 96. Oh my god. Okay, lose a point. Ooh. That's not extreme violence. Uh, feathers are pretty violent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not going to turn the light on on the stairwell. Okay. Because I think someone's upstairs and I don't want to alert them. You're creeping. I'm trying to creep, but I'm creeping. Creeping. Stealth skill, or you're especially creepy. Okay, so you can bet anybody can try to be quiet. So, um, you uh, get in my face. <laughs> the uh, uh, yeah, so you 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 kind of creep up the stairs. Are you did you say you're going with him, or are you down in the well, hallway? Well, once I saw that he was off on his own, he's well, on I mean, off on his own means like. He's over there, and he's right there. Right there. I mean, it's, it's like that. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, and she's, yeah. she's standing at the doorway, being crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah, like I mean, lady. I wanted to see what was upstairs. So okay, so you're upstairs. both you're both you're both creeping up the stairs, and um, the uh, so you creep up the stairs, and you know it kind of, uh, and at the top of the stairs <laughs> is a um, uh, a small sitting room that was built on top of the garage. Mm-hmm has a uh, sort of recessed window benches, a scattering of boxes, um, an old rocking chair, looks like some, uh, you know, repair, like supplies, tools and things. It's very kind of cramped and claustrophobic. Um, the ceiling sort of slopes severely on the, on the, on the side. And it smells of, it smells of paint and something else, I don't know, something sort of spice-like. And this was added on? Yeah, at some point in time. Yeah. Probably about a good idea to cover your room top with a note saying, Duck, finish now. Like the uh, rocking chair, mm-hmm. when you look in, it was rocking. But there's no other, I mean, scanning the room. Like, is, is like really rocking or no, just like, like somebody just got out of it. Right, exactly. Right, so I'm on high alert. And, um, well, so you, you very clearly hear, mm-hmm. um, hear footfalls, um, coming towards you. In the room? Mm-hmm. In the room that he can see where no one is? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's creepy. Yeah, make sanity rolls, because you hear it too. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's your current sanity. It's a downward spiral. The more you lose, the harder it is to make it. I made that one. Okay, you don't lose anything if you make it. Yeah, uh, really? Because uh, I made it. You're hallucinating. Uh, maybe it's weird what acoustics in the house. It, it must be weird acoustics in the house that continue loudly down the stairs and then and then and then the wait, wait, vanishes. We don't feel anything, but we hear. We hear it go like go past, past us. us. Yeah. Uh, or maybe. But we both, but trick of the light. We both, I'll be like, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Footsteps? Yes. Uh, Were you you in the room, or how far have you gotten? I I, I was standing right there. I was behind him. The door slams closed. Wait, with us in the room? Mm Mm-hmm. All right, well, I'm going to obviously turn quickly. And there's like a rush of clumping heavy, heavy footsteps up up the stairs. Beyond, you can hear it beyond the beyond door. Beyond the door, yeah. Okay. Uh, 
I won't get my gun trained on the door and I'll back away. Wait for some You're gonna yell at our kid, our kids saying like I I wouldn't get You hear you hear a man's voice scream out, Jan Jan? Jan. 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 If you stop to ask him to clarify his pronunciation. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saying Jan or Jen? Jan. 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 Who are you looking for? Exactly. Uh, Jan. That's um yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll yell pick. out. Who who are you? So you you're down there looking at the crazy mirror room, mm-hmm. and after kind of admiring the crazy mirror room for a couple of minutes, you hear, and you know, and up there yell, "Who are you?" Or, gonna, well, somebody slams yeah. the door closed first, and then she yells, "Who are you?" I'm gonna turn quickly and look up the stairs. Closed door. At the top of the stairs. Guys. All right, I'm gonna. All right, I'm gonna go over and, and open the door. Yeah, I'll cover her. Okay. Uh, there's nothing there. Make sanity rolls. Oops. Oh, good. You All right. Okay up there? I'm gonna yell that. Did you see anybody come down the stairs? No. Eat. Did you hear anybody come down the stairs? No. Okay. Guys, we need to flee. <laughs> Each of you two lose a point. Kind of feel it, the weirdness. For me, it's very, very off for me. Alright. For me. <clears throat> oh, yeah, keep chatting. She just wants you guys to hear anything. Hmm. Yes, yeah, keep the chat with you. If I can always get the moment. Only uh, again. So, is this, this room is oh, empty. Yeah, empty. Please only please to see if you're empty. Please just go through this room. <laughs> <It's empty. laughs> There's the tools, there's a little but rocking stuff, chair not, that's no, still no. now. Yeah. Is that a closet? No. Uh, little claw. Yeah, yeah. There's like little there's stuff in bench it. nooks and yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. If there's no people here, then I'm going downstairs. All right. I'm gonna tell her, hey, let's go check out that bathroom where the guys are out. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. As you walk out, um, Murray. Isn't that the you bathroom that's attached right here? It's master bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. yeah we were right here. Yeah, she okay. was standing here. So I was going, standing you're here. going through the. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's fine. Um, are you a uh, uh, Gru? Or are you going? Are you following him? No. Into the room across nope. to the bathroom. Nope. Okay. I'm gonna tell them where he's going, and that he's probably going to get killed. It's just the house, guys. You hear a clattering. And you hear, you feel your foot like kick something, like a penny or something on the floor. You know, I'll flip the light on and look around. Yeah, you see it. You see a penny that was on the ground, kind of bounce across the the, the, the floor. Um, and uh, when it hits the mirror, it goes in. And so I knew it. I knew rolls it. to a rolls to a stop on the floor on the other side of the mirror. I knew it. But where would it okay. be? I'm going to just like stare at it and then I'm going to back up but keep my eye on oh, it. Did I tell you to make a sanity roll? Did you no. Make sanity? <laughs> the house of sanity rolls. Mm-hmm. Pass. Alright. Okay. So I'm going to keep my eye on it back up and I'm going to be like Molly, come here. Nope. Come here. Not doing it. I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> I'm only calling you in here because I think somebody's behind you. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> How many lunches? <laughs> More than you currently can afford. <laughs> hey, uh, Molly. You um. You hear someone whistling in the garage. All right, I'm going to flinch deeply at that, and then mm-hmm. whisper loudly to everyone within earshot what I hear. That's us coming down the stairs. There is someone yeah. whistling in the garage. You hear a sort of a thump, like somebody falling down in there. Okay, there's somebody falling. So yeah, you the the, the there's a voice, like a man's voice, kind of 
curses quietly. Can everyone hear it? Yeah. Wait, well then. Can you see what you There's a there's a sound like a um, there's a sort of sound like like current being put through a circuit and all the mm-hmm. lights dim for a few seconds. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, and there's sort of a, a you know this loud clack as the fuses trip. And the kids start in the house. And then the lights come back on. Okay. Is the penny still in the mirror? Did we get that that hat with the light on it, mm-hmm. Stanley, from the no, from the storage mm-hmm. unit? Oh, I didn't write that down. I didn't write it was a, didn't you say there was a hat light or something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, hard the headlamp. Hard yeah. Hard the headlamp. Hard headlamp. Yeah. Sure. I've got a. Yeah. No, the light. penny. If you're looking, no, the penny's not in there anymore. Uh, I'm gonna go and touch the mirror and do. Is it like a soft mirror? <laughs> <laughs> Some squishy mirror. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, opening the garage door and going in downstairs. Okay. Um, the garage, big two two car garage, doubles as a storage area. Um, long time ago, it was a screened in porch, but it's been sort of mm-hmm. rebuilt and remodeled severely since then. Uh, there's a uh, the, the garage door out. has like an old 1970s mm-hmm. model opener mm-hmm. and a mechanical mm-hmm. opener on sure. it. And Modern fuse box and an old refrigerator, like eighties era refrigerator, gardening tools, um, and uh, no people or ghosts. Well, you s- no, there's nobody in there. It's dark and you know, are lights on in here or no? Uh, no, it's on. Lights are off. I'm gonna hit the so the, the light is sort of spilling in from from where you right, are. Right. Yeah. I'll turn on the lights if I can. The uh, well, as you're going, th- as you're do- going to looking mm-hmm. for the light switch, there's a like the refrigerator door suddenly opens, and uh, and you see someone. You see like I don't know somebody standing in front of it, blocking the light, who looks up and then shuts the door. But right. I'll yell out, "Freeze!" Federal agent. Yeah, turn the light on. There's nobody there. Roll sanity. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Something I want to make that one again. Okay. Stable. This one. This house is infested with magicians. (laughs) It has David Copperfield syndrome. If you succeed, there's no light. That's the reason for all of the mirrors. Yeah. Um, (coughs) There is sort of a. A smell in the, in the air, like, like, Watch my like uh, disappear in you. barbecue. <sighs> Weird. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> and, uh, I'm heading for the fridge as quickly as I can. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready, looking around. Uh, when I get over there, I'm going to open the door. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean it was it was it was cleared out. You know, like it's just a is, it is, it even, is it even on? So um, yeah, it's on. Okay. I mean, it's plugged in and, and everything's cool. cool. There's nothing in it. The the uh, light works. Yeah. yeah, as you're as you're going through the garage, the the smell is stronger. Uh, the barbecue. So actually, you smell burning hair then too. Oh, weird. Must have been uh, so it smells like a like a charcoal grill, and then it's burning hair. Mm-hmm. Is it that that same well, spicy? I mean, not really charcoal, but certainly meat burning. Was that that same spicy sort of smell they smelled upstairs? No, burning no. hair is no. very spooky. <laughs> I didn't burn my hair at a grill. <laughs> nice. Grill. Nice. Um, uh, what were you doing? Into the. I was going to see if it was Touching a soft mirror. The mirror. This is the house where magicians go to die. It. Um, yeah, and haunt. And everyone else. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it feels. Uh, it's very cold. Mirror is, I mean, like I mean, obviously it would be it would be because it's glass and so it's not going to be the same as room temperature. Yeah, exactly. But like older than usual. Yeah. Older than you would expect. I'm gonna look at the bathtub in the mirror. Like the reflection.
reflection in the bathtub in the mirror. He's still just standing paralyzed at the entrance to the master bedroom slash garage I'm slash not living paralyzed. Room. I'm still whisper shouting at you to get out of there. What is We're wrong with you? Center of everything. <laughs> the ship is wrong with you people. You <laughs> split up for one thing, which is the worst idea ever. You're in the murder chambers. You guys are... I'm just confused now. Well, I'm not in the garage with him. I didn't follow him into the garage. Yeah. So you're right near me, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sleeping right there. Amber. The cipher on chicken scratches. Okay. Okay, here you go. Alright. Um so the uh Yeah. The uh um well, where were we? Push the, the So it pushes in here looking yeah. at the, the bathroom in the mirror. Right. Um, yeah, okay. So the... Uh, yeah, I've got a strong s- suspicion that there's something weird going on with mirrors here. Because no, for some sh- reason I keep saying weird things in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you uh, when you look in the... You sort of look at the... At the... So you're looking at in the mirror of the bedroom where it reflects... Well, no, you said you said, you that, said that there was a mirror. a mirror in the bathroom that the penny rolled into, right? Oh, uh, no, no, it rolled into one of the mirrors on the wall of the bedroom. Oh, so I kicked it backwards? Well, you were starting to walk in and kick yeah. it and hit the wall there before you got in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, okay. But but you can see the... the oh, well, the, the I mean, I'm checking out which other... On the yeah. mirror over there. Yeah. Like, is the tub opposite? Oh, it sure is. Yeah, okay. Right over there. Yeah, I'll like pull a chair over if I have to to get the right sort of angle mm-hmm. to like peer up over the ledge of the tub in the mirror. Uh, yeah, well, you uh, as you're doing that, you um, before you get up on the chair, uh, sort of looking in the mirror as you're sort of looking up there again. There's a woman standing there. Where? Like Where in the in the in the bathroom here. Near the, she was reflected over there. Yeah, She's like in the yeah near the. What's she look like? Um, uh, old woman, uh, elderly, you know, like 60s or 70s, but probably looks, looks a little rougher than that. And how's she dressed? Uh, old fashioned. Okay. Uh, uh, I calmly, well, I guess I need to make a sanity check. (laughs) Or do I not need to make a sanity check until I turn around? Well, what are you doing? Uh, well, I want to ask her to tell me if there's someone that fits that description standing in the bathroom behind me. Ask who? Her. Well, Molly. Well, Molly's standing right here. Right, yeah. so I need her to come in and... You need to come into the room and look at the bathroom is what you need to yeah. do. Right, I just need to know if I need to make a sure. sanity Roll check the, before or after I need to Where is he standing? Where are you standing? Because I'm trying to see if I can make that logical... He's somewhere over here and looking at that. Right, right. no, I... Come over this way mm-hmm. okay. to pull over a chair to Just get up. up yeah, to He's see. Looking at the, okay. So there's someone standing here. Right. Yeah, I see someone. Yeah. Yes. As you're standing gonna... here, do you see her? Right. Like, I want to see if I have the presence of mind to keep looking at this woman in the mirror wow. and tell Molly to come Don't and look. come and look. Yeah. So is that going to take a sanity sure. check? No, not yet. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, Molly. What, were, what was your reaction? Uh, okay. What's Don't your move. Instinct? Don't move. I'm going to sprint in there, grab him. Not even look. Not even going to fucking look. Do not care. Come on. Come on. (laughs) 100. That's a fumble. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, Yeah, so you've got your eyes glued shut, and you stumble into him and start pawing at him. Um, I want to yank on him without and looking pull him at out without of looking the... at anything. So you're True. sort of wrestling him around, and you kind of in, you know you're dragged around, and yeah, she's not there. So now you make the sanity roll. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> I swear these are so crazy. coming down the stairs, the two of them are. Now's not the time. Well, oh, I'm I'm at stage at the fridge. fridge. How much for a failure? One. You're at the fridge. I'm standing. And I never, I never went in, so I'm. Well, you're at the door. I'm over there. Well, I've kind of moved over to the wall. And I'm kind of pushing my head against the wall. 
Which one? I'm yelling yeah. the wall. I'm trying to drag this him wall? out of no, this room. Like, I'm coming up here. Just up here. Because they're in the... Where are they? Are they in here? Yeah, they're in the bedroom. Okay. So there's so like I'm the garage, and he's in there, and the garage, and the bedroom's over there. All right, so behind I'm, you is the I'm, kitchen I'm right, and the breakfast I'm right snow. here. And I'm just kind of leaning up against the wall, like trying to touch it here, see, see what I hear. Yeah. Okay. Fondling the wall. Uh, that's very weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like see you do that. <laughs> Caressing the wall. head back into the house. That's weird. No weirder than a disappearing garage person for... Yeah, I'm going to start uh, doing a little silent praying right now. <laughs> Something's not right. Deputy Black over there. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Somebody, um, you, you feel a, uh, you feel a, uh, a small hand, kind of wet and clammy, tug on one of yours. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna kind of jerk it away and get down to see what's there. Uh, it ain't nothing. You see a, a, a sopping wet, dead blue boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is he very Face downcast. He looks up and opens his mouth and rancid water and grubs spill out everywhere. <laughs> oh. his, his grip kind of tightens and then he vanishes. That was pretty horrifying. Even for my I stay sane barely. Okay. Barely. It's only because you were expecting <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can work on your denial. And, uh, <laughs> so, as far as I'm concerned, we've pretty much figured out why. What just going on? Yeah. I mean, the house. The foreigners did something to this here house, and now it's just damage control. How many times? How many times? We already got a bunch of gasoline cans. The problem here is the uninitiated among us. The problem here is getting out alive. No, I will remind you that I'm a lot it's stronger than you. Out the house. I will remind you that I'm a lot stronger than you, and I'm trying to pull you out of this room. My eyes are glued shut, so I'm not doing a whole good, you know, a great job of aim. <laughs> well, no, I'll just say, let me get off me, we're leaving. Now, I'm wondering if there's some sort of hallucinogenic gas being released in here, or something from radon. The issue here is how to deal with the threat. Well, we could burn it down, but that could draw a lot of attention, as fire yeah. usually does. Plus, someone has tried to set this house on fire before and it didn't pay. It didn't work. I don't think burning it down is Burn it down so. harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless, before we make a decision on how and when we're going to burn it down, we need to get out. Oh, no, I think we need to experience some more things to get him to our side, which means it's going cool more of the house. There's still three more bedrooms we haven't even looked at on the other side. I agree. So dining room, should, kitchen? I think yeah. we should look at the other rooms. Really? Because I'm coming through that door saying, I think we should go. We need to we leave. Need to, well, we there's other leave. rooms no. that we need to look at real no. quick. No. Okay, no. let's talk about what we're seeing here. Uh, I was just in that room, and there's a bunch of things in the mirrors that aren't actually real. So Something... Very, very wrong. The question is, what are we going to do about it so it stops hurting other people? Uh, nothing. Call someone. Who? Who do you call? Uh, <laughs> Don't say Ghostbusters. That's just <laughs> I know. 
it. So if you're going to say anything to him, it's your You call, bring me along but. on these crazy ass things, okay? To tell you when to be scared. You need to be scared. <laughs> uh, come here. <laughs> She'll lose it first. I will. My sanity, my max sanity is 20. I will go crazy first. I'm already pretty crazy. What's your breaking point? 20. Wait, no. Your sanity's 20 and your breaking No. Yeah, no, you're already past your breaking point. What? Oh. <laughs> you started, yeah. you started yeah. at your breaking point. Because of such a low power score. All right. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was your trauma, your background? Why did you lose the five sanity? Because, because of, of hard, hard times. Some hard, hard experience. experience. Hard experiences. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get to that later. I didn't think to sort <laughs> it away. I didn't realize to, yeah. Yeah, I didn't you've, realize. You've got, so you've got, so reset your breaking point to 15. Oh, okay. Is the gist of this. And you already have some kind of indefinite insanity that you're suffering from. Is it Obviously, paranoia? It's yeah. paranoia. Yeah. <laughs> because I think it's paranoia. <clears throat> That's fine. You can write that down on the back. And you're we are going sanities. to die. We're going to die. Or some kind of, you know, debilitating she's, anxiety. And she's treating it with homelessness. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's the reason I'm homeless, is because I can't get over this crippling anxiety. Well, I know in the regular Call of Cthulhu rules, that's one method of dealing with insanity, is being, becoming a vagrant. How is that a coping method? You flee from everything? Oh, that's... Yeah. Would it be paranoia, or would it be constant anxiety? Some heavy tail of phobia. What's the Greek term for uh, phobia of everything? Omophobia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my> <laughs> I'm going to be omophobia. Well, I'm, I'm going to go and look in the other rooms. I'm just going to walk and do that. Yeah, I'll walk with her. Cause... I'm like grasping at you, pleading with you. Please, can we just go? Please, we can talk about this elsewhere. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we what? have to, I mean, he's involved now. We have to get him to where he realizes that there's something why, why? unusual. Well, from, from where you are, um, when you can see through the kitchen, there's the dining room down there near the front door, and then uh, otherwise, like, beyond the den is the other bedrooms. Mm-hmm. Let's check out the dining room. That's right next to the front door. You're welcome to stay there if you want. I can't split up and there are some little us. Or some of our friends. When did the addition get added on? Um, I'll tell you what I think it got added on. Mm. Was it by Tyler? The, wood? the upstairs? Yeah. Uh, it was like 1940. Right before all of the deaths so, started. But after the... Uh, As I was going down the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wish I wish he'd go away. <laughs> 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 um, so the, the dining room uh, looks, uh, looks out through a, a gable window onto the front yard and shrubs and uh, there's a it, it, leads, it leads out to the, to the kitchen and then out to the foyer with the front door. Um, it's filled with boxes of uh, Yamila Isari's possessions that have sat there for months and months. So the first question, you know, play it by ear, given, given what I wrote. Okay. The second question, well, I don't know. Okay. why would you want it to? I, I just wondered. Yeah. Okay. So boxes of, of her stuff that sat there for a long time. Um, and uh, there's a, a gaudy chandelier, like 1950s chandelier hanging overhead. Yeah. Okay. So all of her stuff, gaudy chandelier.
because whatever's going on has been going on with the house for a while. So that means that it's going to, if it's part of the house, then it's going to be part of the house that's been in the house for a while. Are you it's going to be a part of the house that hasn't been burnt. It's going to be under layers of paint, layers of carpet. Why would you layer carpet? There might even, maybe there's a basement that got covered over. It's, no, there's, it's, it's, it's like hardwood floors, so there's not. The murders carpet, started um, um, in the 50s, is that right? Mm -hmm. That's when the deaths 59? started? 59? Yeah. Right after that addition was added? Well, not or right. short, no, it was shortly before. added? It was before the I thought addition. you said the addition was built no. in the 1940s. Four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the addition was added and then people started dying. It's 19 years later. Still. So you're going through the den, uh, um, and you, as you're crossing the den to get and, and go into the little hallway that leads to the other bedrooms, um, everybody hears a single huge gunshot that rattles the house. Shotgun blast. Oh. You smell cordite, gunpowder. Yeah, this where they come from. So, who, who's that good at working this? She went at 50. Oh, and we have 40. Yeah, okay. So, uh, there's a sort of a subtler smell of burning hair and blood in the air. Someone shot in the head. Yeah, like within feet of you. Everybody will say, ready? Oh, yeah, I'm looking at and, it. Well, no, you're not, because I'll get to you in a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Fail. And then nobody is surprised. <laughs> All right, uh, D4, tell me how much you lose if you fail it. Any first succeeding? No. Just Quattro. One, just one, thank goodness. And that puts so, me below my breaking point. Okay. Um, so, so reset your breaking point. Um, if at any point you really don't want to take a sanity loss, you can you can punish one of your bonds instead. So you can let me know if that comes up. Oh, and were we supposed to be checking the? Boxes. If not, we not in this case. Okay. This, is, this is super this is cool. stuff. Okay. You don't get used to that. Yeah. You know, as you sort of, ever, as you're hmm. kind of looking around and startled by the what sounded like a shotgun blast killing somebody <laughs> in this room. Actually, the three of you see uh, what's his name, Dressner. Dressner. Dressner had. Uh, he was like in the middle of drinking from one of those nasty coffee cups. What? What are you doing? I, do I know I'm drinking from one of those nasty coffee cups? Or? Yeah, because all of a sudden you're overcome by vomiting and retching, and there's like <laughs> in the rotten coffee and bile, there's a crawling, writhing pile of maggots. You're I'm gonna with. actually vomit in the center. <laughs> 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 That's horrific. Do I make a sandy roll? Yeah, everybody gets to. Oh my god, I'm crazy right now. Oh my god, what do I uh, do? Nine. I'm good. I'm used to people vomiting. I'm, you, I'm not used to ghosts committing suicide in the same room I'm in. So, Guru, you lose another one. And you lose a d4. Uh, just the one. So, mm -hmm. so without thinking, I was just picking up a cup and drinking it. I realized uh -huh. I wasn't in drink. Yeah. Oh, that's the same. Um, so, I did go past my breaking point. Does anything significant happen? Uh, just on the back of the sheet, right? Yes, in indefinite insanities. We'll get to that. Okay. So it's not anything spectacular like in the older versions where you um, only if you lose like five points from a single thing a single okay. moment then you freak out temporarily okay you just got long term effects so seven mm -hmm. long term effects mm -hmm. <coughs> so uh, I am no, you're puking yeah roll yeah. a d10 four roll well, a d10 for puking seven yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be puking hard for about seven minutes. Oh, gross! Wow. 
Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna like, like to run out, and it's you know how it is. Yeah. It's just sort of that yeah. kind of like heaving, retching. I'm gonna like take him by the shoulders you and like to lead water. him. Water. I'm gonna try and lead him outside to fresh Good air. Idea. Let's yeah. Let's all go. Okay. You're gonna be dragging as I vomit everywhere. Yep. Okay. I'm used to this. Not only am I, you know, hard to be a, but I also go drinking with my sister pretty regularly. <laughs> so. The combination is plenty of bones. Between the two, there's plenty yeah, of bones. Yeah, so you can drag me by just retching. We go. Hey, um, keep it on the fly. Uh, Gru, you hear a, a phone ringing. There's you should a, answer it. No, I don't want to answer it. It's from one of the bedrooms. I have no interest. The There's corner. a phone ringing in the one of the bedrooms. bedrooms. Yeah, you can all hear it now. And I don't want it. I don't want Which it. Which bedroom? You can't because we're preoccupied. But yeah. I'm going to go walk in there. No. Yeah, I'm walking in there. Oh, come on. Just come outside with us. No, I'm going to go walk in. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, the bedroom, small bedroom, about 12 feet, 11 feet by 12 feet. Um, shares a bathroom with the other bedroom down the hall. Uh, plain, empty room with an old ratty. <laughs> Lime green rug. And so this one right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No um, phone? And, uh, uh, yeah, actually, the, like, under the ratty lime green, you can see there's, like, a lump in the rug, and it's kind of rattling there when the, with the phone ringing. Mm -hmm. um, and there's an old rotary phone underneath it. The wire sort of to the phone sort of trails off under the, under the rug. Lifting up the rug. Yeah. Hello? Um, <laughs> rug phone? Rug phone, rug phone okay. residence. It's a, a woman's, an, an, like an, old, an elderly woman's voice with uh, sort of an accent. It says, uh, may I speak with, with uh, Mrs. Asari? Who is this? Who's calling? Uh, is is, is uh, Mrs. Falcone there? Uh, I need to know who's calling, please. Uh, what, what about Mrs. Braintree? All these people are dead. Yeah. Yeah. Over the years. Is Mr. Tycroft there? Who's speaking? Uh, can I speak with Mr. Tyler then? Who are you? Uh, the Aikens. Can I speak with the Aikens? You're going to have to tell me who you are. I'm hanging uh, up if you don't tell know me who, who you she are. Is. She's, uh, she says, I, 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 I'm, I'm very, I'm very sorry to bother you. I, I, I forget. Uh, Mr. Gedros is there? Or Mr. Diaz? with Mrs. Wheeler? You have me on the line. Who is it? Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I must I must speak with Mrs. Wheeler. There's, mm. there's no one here by that name. Well, she, she's, she's there. I'll wait. It's for you. Um, I'm just going to uh, set the May phone. I speak with Mrs. Wheeler? The voice sort of rises an octave. No Please put Mrs. Him. Wheeler on, and that kind of rises again and starts to sound a little garbled. Uh, now, I'm putting the phone down. I'm it's not hanging up, I'm just putting it down. Oh, okay. Well, then you can kind of hear it from down there on the mm -hmm. on the rug, Jeez. sort of making this rising garble of Mrs. unintelligible Wheeler. voices until it there's a sudden electrical shriek and it dies. Yeah, I'm sanity roll. Seven. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a seven. I'm okay. good. All right. It's like, I'm doing good on my thing. I'm so sane right now. Cool as a sea cucumber. I am cool, man. Sea cucumbers vomit all the time up. for no reason. Like sea cucumbers are like... <laughs> you had plenty of reasons. They're like fezzes. Fezzes are cool. They're not like fuzzes. They're where, like vomiting where, 
getting slugs Wear all the time. Wear a cover on your head. <laughs> As is with any mature killed to Jenny Tom. She can take a late film. You, um, you hear a voice. Like, as you're, you are backing up, is that right? Towards mm-hmm. the door. As you do, you sort of hear this, hear this, um, hear this voice, an old woman's voice. It sounds, sounds like the one you heard on the phone that seems to be coming from, from the air. It's, uh, and she's sort of, she's sort of, it's sort of chanting in, in Italian. Italian. Is that one of the languages I speak? Russian and French, yeah, it's... No, I mean, it's Italian. Italian. You'd recognize it's Italian, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, you'd recognize Italian. You might pick out a couple of, you it's know, real. a couple of distinctive words or here or there. Just get mm-hmm. with the yes. there's, okay. there's one that, uh, you, you, you pick out this, uh, the, the, the phrase, uh, l'uomo nero, that comes up, that comes up frequently and sort of emphatically. Uh, make an intelligence test. Tell me what it sounds like. Three. Yeah. Three. The, the the dark man or the black man. Nighttime. Racist. Racist ghost. <laughs> as you, uh, the man in black. Okay. Yeah. So as you as you step out of as you step out of the room, the vo- the chanting ceases. And you get to roll it out yet again. And that one I failed. Okay, that's a point. Congratulations. Well, out of character, I know what's going on now. In character. I know who the black man is. You know what you're with me? <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, you guys were uh-huh. heading out to, the, out to the front. To the to the front yard. The we'll ruin front everything. Porch. We'll see if we can sure. figure it out. Would it help us survive? All I'll say is that there was a short story that Lovecraft wrote that the black man appeared in called Dreams of the Witch House. Oh, good. Which was a very good short story. And we're all going to die. So. So what's happening? You got the, the rest of you went out front, and so after a couple of minutes, I guess you join them, and after another couple of minutes, your stomach calms itself down, and you're standing in front of the in front of the very ordinary looking house with its pretty ivy vines growing up in it. Okay, um, I think we should follow the last set of instructions. I don't know what just happened. What are what, what are what are what are employee extreme caution? Yeah, to no. what to what no. extent are you reacting? I, I mean, to like all of this that you've been shocked. seeing, and also you probably notice they're they're, they're sort of shaken, the, but the not to the same. It's yeah, not an so existential so kind of shaken. So yeah, we're pretty sure someone prepared for <coughs> sure. that they should like this to happen. Which yeah, is which is weird. itself weird. I, we're pretty sure we know what caused the death of FBI Special Agent Arthur Donnelly. How much and that was that he was fucking... How much you lost, by the way? Uh, six. Okay, so so bear it, bear in mind, you're you're all in varying degrees really shaky and traumatized. Mm-hmm. So try to try to let that shape how you're how you're conversing about this. And he's staring at you like you're all crazy people. Yeah, yeah. I'm just in shock. Like I don't. Get, I don't have any frame of reference. For so what were you saying about? Uh... Okay. Um. So we know what caused Arthur Donnelly, and he was yeah fucking haunted to death. <laughs> um. Fucking haunted to death. <laughs> things happen. These things do happen. This house is still a threat. Very much so. Such a threat. Uh, I'm pretty sure that someone did something to this house a long time ago. No idea what to do to it. Fucking burn it down, but that didn't work the last time, so. So, how do you react? Uh, He's talking about burning it down, but maybe that won't work. Yeah, I don't understand what he's saying. 
of not working, but I I don't think she's burning down. I mean, we still it's a crime scene for one thing, but uh, but I I don't I'm having a hard time reconciling. Yeah, everybody everybody get in character here and let's have this conversation because yeah. you're all standing around out front and varying yeah. degrees of freaked out in this. All yeah. in favor of us going very very far away to have this discussion. I I'm kind of in agreement. I I don't know what just happened, but I we, think. We need to get away from here, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to start walking towards my car. Which is so parked in the... What are you going to do? Which indefinite insanity did you settle on there? In, uh, Where are you going to go? Okay, somewhere. somewhere. Uh, I, roll, uh, I, think I, roll, I think I wrote omnophobia. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just call it a, just call it a anxiety, no, generalized anxiety, anxiety <laughs> disorder. Yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of which, make a sanity test. Me? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, you're freaking out. I'm you're, ha- freaking. you're having a full-on anxiety attack. I am attack. freaking. Yeah. I am screaming now. <laughs> They're um, screaming. At I think me. I'm gonna walk to my trunk and get out the bolt cutters. That's where the shotguns are. I know it's where the shotguns are, but we might grab the bolt cutters. Bolt okay. cutters. Is there a car behind mine or in front of mine? I'm thinking probably behind mine. Probably. Is there any neighbors? I'm getting a, probably got here the shotgun. A shotgun and loading it up. What 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 are you planning on doing with that? Are you get, you're getting the shotgun out? Yeah. Okay. What do you think you're going to shoot with that? Did you see anything that you could shoot? I saw a shoot the ton of stuff. No, I'm I'm about to go back into that house and break all of the mirrors with this with bolt these cutter. pair of bolt cutters. You, there's, you, I'm sure the car has like a a, a tire iron. Yeah, I'll yeah, get the tire. It'll be a little easier iron. to wield. Can you yeah. Shoot the tire iron and going in to get the shoot. Shoot. What yeah. what is going on here? What I'll go with what are you me. people doing here? What why is I'm curling into a ball against the car and screaming is what well, I'm doing. That's here. the most <laughs> rational thing anybody's doing right now, I think. One of the neighbors, this little old lady, looks out her door and says, Keep quiet. Fuck you Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> she looks she, she looks shocked and slams the door closed. <laughs> I'm surprised she doesn't mother. Oh, right, it's the Spooner house. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. She's been for years. She's been clear of this. Uh, I'm talking to the house. Yes. <laughs> Used to the house. <laughs> you people. Yeah, what, what I, yeah I'm going to get the tire iron. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just getting the tire iron and going back inside. You know and something I'll go, I'll go with you. I'll follow it. I'll follow it. No, 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 no. No, no, because he's probably a pretty good candidate at this point. Oh well, I mean, I agree, but I'm not the agent. Started calling the, you know, calling the media or anything. I, I, I agree. I just don't feel like I have enough rank in the. uh, Well, fuck it. I don't care about rank. Okay, so listen, dude. Don't go in the house. Don't go. Would you agree with this that weird stuff is going on? Yes, 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 something... Okay. You drank I maggots. I don't... I have no idea what's going on. We are part of an organization that's part of the U.S. government that deals with this sort of weird shit and protects the... keeps it away from the rest of the Southwest. I'm <laughs> having a hard time accepting that, given <laughs> how <laughs> crazy they are. But you saw it. What's happening? No, I'm just, I can accept what's happening. I the idea that you people are part of the government <laughs> agency that stops this? It's not an official agency. You won't find it anywhere on the books. But Someone's we're here right. to protect the public from dealing with this sort of shit. We <laughs> deal with it so other people don't have to. We keep it out of the newspapers. We keep it out of the media. Well, you're not doing a very good job of it so far. And some, so of, us, some of us never ask to be a part of this organization. Sometimes so slip, things back. slip through Donnelly. He was one of our comrades. <laughs> Wait, he was investigating this, and it got him. And then we were sent here to finish it up. Wait, Donnelly is an FBI agent. Yes, and she is a uh, U.S. Marshal, and I'm part of the VA. And there's no all one knows we're from all walks of life here. <laughs> it, it's all professional. So do you know what to do about this? That's what we're trying to figure out. Breaking the right now, like we're going idea. to do the best that we can. The last recourse that I can think of right now is burning this place down so it can't hurt anyone else. 
but it's suddenly better and better the more you, you say it. You you were in there with us. Yeah, no. I, There's no one in this house. No one but us. No one but us chickens. And yeah. Well, if you think that's gonna solve this, then I think we're, we're, I think we're not, burning it down is just gonna piss off. I I don't here. I don't think burning it's gonna work because okay, burning well, it didn't. It someone didn't tried work. to burn this house down before yes. and it didn't work. Agreed. Right now we need to. I'm just fucking frustrated now. My break these goddamn mirrors. It's coming out of the mirrors. If you break the mirrors, you will enter it. Well, maybe there's something behind the mirrors that will help us out figure out what's going on here. But right now, take you into the and right now I'm just angry and I need to fucking break something. I'm not inclined to go back in there. I'm I'll not go, either, but I'll I get go with him. Out. You can wait out here with Brady Pants over here. <laughs> Okay, so you were having your debate, and then however that resolved on this part of that, but well, yeah, I, I basically they told me okay. about they told me they were part of some secret right. government organization, so it's all like which is again hard. And you're kind of a little skeptical, but well, yeah, given these um. individuals, I'm not so sure it's really yeah. Although yeah, I've seen right. government organizations before, and so but you had <laughs> and so you had you said you had your tire iron. And you're you're heading back into the house. Yes. Yeah. To, she's to bust up some mirrors. Are you okay. taking a weapon? Oh yeah, I'm taking. I'm. A I'm th- best case scenario, I'm hoping that maybe there's something behind the mirrors that will help us. Worst case scenario, at least I'm not so angry at this house. Okay. What are you doing while they're going? They're going I'm, inside. I'm begging them not to go inside, but when they do, anyways, I'm grabbing the bolt cutters and heading in after them. You know, there's a shotgun I, ring. Like right I'm not entirely in my right mind. <laughs> okay. Just in case there are it's, bolts to cut. It's heavy. All right. It makes me feel safer. All right. She's going back to the car for bolt cutters while they're going inside. What are you doing? Uh, 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 I'm not going back inside the house until we figure out what's going on. All right. Like, if they want to go and break mirrors, that's their business. Okay. So you go into the in, in through the front door. I mean, there's like, you know. There, there's mirrors pretty frequently in the house, but you're talking about the master bedroom, right? Yeah, no, pretty much every mirror. Every house. mirror, every <laughs> okay. single mirror. Well, you go into the into the foyer, then you know, and there's like a there's a mirror on the near the you know near the entryway there. Like sure. A mirror door there. As you're going at it, you can you get a glimpse for a moment of like a uh, of like a child's wet handprint on the mirror. Yeah. Go ahead and roll sanity. Sure. You're gonna go crazy doing this. Forty six. That's a fail, I think. Yep. yep. Okay. So lose a point, and then you can smash it. Sure. Smash. Wait! Don't smash it. Oops, don't smash! Don't smash it. Why not? Because the hand pin fades. No, I, I mean, I smashed it. Okay. Well, I'm going to like point my gun at you and shoot you. Uh. What the shit? <laughs> See, that's why I don't go back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your dexterity? Why are you shooting him? I don't know. He's why is he destroying this house? I told him to stop. That's true. As I was in mid swing, yeah, I said the stop. I smashed the mirror, oh, and then oh, you told oh, me oh, to oh, not oh, smash oh, it. Yeah. What's your dexterity first? Fifty-five. No, you're, you're actual. Oh, eleven. Eleven. Okay, what's your dexterity? Eleven. All right. So, um, so she's, you smash the thing and she with levels, you know what, roll alertness, that's what they, that's what we make alertness for. Mm-hmm. Did you notice the shark of being pointed at you? Uh-huh. <coughs> uh, 20. Is that a success? Yes. Well, look at that. So, uh, so yeah, the corner of your eye, you see the shotgun being leveled at you. So, um, tell you what. You uh, you tell me how you want to react, and then and then we'll see what happens. What's your okay? Reason? So tell me exactly what's happened so far. The shotgun's about to shoot you. I'm oh, well, no, no, so to like, stop. We go, we go, go into the, the house. Okay. Yeah, you, you walk see the mirror on the wall. Yeah. See the mirror. See the hand. Like you smash it. Smash. You see and the hand. And you see out of the corner of your eye, she's bringing the shotgun down on you. 
Okay, so the mirror is smashed. There's yeah. a shotgun pointing at me. Yeah. I'm going the so like a little, a little map so mm -hmm. we know where everybody is. Yeah. Okay. You know, you're in the foyer. She's like behind you, next to the front door. Mm -hmm. You just smash the thing. It's probably like the door to the closet, the little closet or something like that. And um, I guess I'm gonna like smash. back roll towards the dining room or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Suddenly, uh, drop, drop the tire iron. Oh, I don't have tire iron. So, she's just so walking you, in the door. So, so he's, yeah, he's, he's instead of dropping whatever, he's he's uh, like walking out of the room in a hurry. So you shoot him or you don't shoot him. What, what, are you go leaving the house? No, are you, no, he's just diving for room? cover. I'm shooting at him. Right, so I don't you, trust roll, you, drop your thing. you roll firearms. This is with a shotgun with buckshot. So it's at a plus 20 to your chance. So, yeah. Okay, what'd you roll? 58. 58, okay. You can roll dodge. Okay. Oh my god. That's a fail. 56. Okay. You you weren't wearing any bulletproof vest or anything like that, I take it? I'm a doctor, sir. <laughs> I'm a doctor, not a veteran. We didn't find the any bullets. The answer to where are you wearing a bulletproof vest? I'm a doctor, not a brain, <laughs> sir. All right. Sorry, dude. So, roll a 2d10. Just for your simple again. Yeah. That's an eight. Is it? Mm -hmm. Is it? Go, I did. Yeah. Okay. Nine. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Yep. So that drops you to zero, right? Or negative four, which you don't need to go down to zero. Okay. Okay. So wow. there is an explosion of the shotgun firing, and as he's sort of diving for cover, he kind of, you know explodes in gore and flops down to the ground. I'm in the doorway and I'm holding the bolt cutters. You see her shoot. <laughs> Would you mind explaining to me why uh, you just I, th I think that's her? I think that's way too way too civilized yes. an approach for you to <laughs> in this situation. Yeah. I think I'm she should probably I'm make a sanity check actually for home. seeing one of her friends. Oh yeah that's her right. friend. Uh, yeah yeah. Yeah yeah do that. Uh, nope. Okay. Um, that's I, I know I saw it as a roll. Yeah, I think that's probably a D3. Then again, are you the one that's immune to... No, you're the one that's immune no. to, to... Violence, that's me. Uh, so I would say that would be helplessness. Mm -hmm. Seeing um, a friend get shot. It's not a bomb. Not well, you have the cheat sheet there. Seeing or hear a friend being gruesomely killed, 0-1-D-6. Yeah, that counts. Yeah. Go for it. Good thing that the person with first aid okay, just so got fucking murdered. Now hold on. Your <laughs> options, you have options. Okay. If you prefer to, to reduce that loss, you can project it off onto one of your bonds instead and lose fewer points of, of sanity. So what's the rationale there? What's going on? Uh, basically, it's, it's you know, you're drawing strength from your bonds, mm -hmm. so but long term, they're going to deteriorate because you're Every having Every time you of, see them, yeah. you'll see me. And um, so if you want to do that, what you do is you roll a d6 and spend that much willpower and reduce the sanity loss by that much and then reduce one of your bonds by half that much. If you re are reduced to zero willpower, you freak the hell out and you can't do this after all. I mean, normally that's not a problem, but you have really willpower. So roll your d6. And yeah. Okay, so three, you lose, take you mark off three willpower points, so you're down to two. All right, and you lose only two points of sanity, okay. not five. So you don't go temporarily insane. It takes me two migrating points. You're at your breaking point yet again. <laughs> this is what happens when you put your power as a dump stat. So <laughs> on the back of the sheet, this say... Your you're the you one know, who said you wanted to be a hobo. <laughs> on the back of your sheet, say, you know, yes, again, or something, because you've got a new indefinite insanity to you know. if you live long enough. And then uh, pick one of your bonds that you're drawing strength from. My best friend, Gerald. Yeah, knock that down by two points. Dear Gerald. And in, in the end, if you survive in the in-between scene, we'll figure out what shape that deterioration okay. takes. So you can keep control of yourself, more or less, um, for the moment. 
and then, she still just blew that guy away. Yeah, and then you need to roll as well because you kind of turn around and can see what just happened. You yeah. don't know them as well, so you're not going to lose a D6. I'm not soft. Yeah, yeah, we were in the doorway pretty much. Like you, yeah. you, you can hear us. Well, yeah, I'm were you out by the? Into, I'm well, out by the car. A, he's go, out by the car. Yeah, that's true. I'll go along with that. So you hear I the hear you shot. hear the gunshot and the screaming. Yeah. And um, and I guess we can leave it at that. I wouldn't that. imagine that you'd know. What? The that, that you wouldn't uh, know. No, happened. I wouldn't suspect that you would just right. run run no. something that way. Right. No. No. Okay. So yeah, we can leave it at that for later. Oh, I no, really you, need, you need to make a sandwich roll. Okay. You need to make Because you're the one that just murdered your friend. Yeah, what the actual I didn't want it. Yeah, I'm saying that's the sad part. <laughs> you, you, you succeed at it? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, that would, yeah, you're going to lose a point anyway. What the actual shit? Are we going to leave it at that? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Because this stuff. house is amazing. I like this house. So, um, the way dying works <laughs> is, uh... I mean, it's basically if you don't get any treatment in that first round after you drop well, the It's not necessarily a single right? round. I mean, it's basically, it, it's kind of, it's a real judgment call. Like, once you hit zero hit points, you know, if, I mean, if the circumstances are obviously this is a dead person, then point no blank amount of first aid is going to do you any good. If it's if it's you know if it's not that obvious, then first aid might work on you after all and bring you back up to positive if it's within yeah. an hour or so. I mean, but you said kind of she hit him in call. the chest with a shotgun. Yeah, for fourteen points, it could have been the face. Well, you know, I don't know, I but mean, she didn't really say she was aiming at his face, so. Oh, but I was just so close, such close. Yeah. You don't even have to aim. Right. <laughs> right. Well, she was only a few feet away, so it's a little tight little spread. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. Family. Yeah, it's, it's not okay. her fault. It's not her fault.